You're watching GHSA Football on GPTV. The following program is an exclusive presentation of GPTV. PTV presents the 2002 GHSA Football Semifinals. Funding for this program is provided in part by IBEW Local 613, Georgia Electric Membership Corporations, South Trust Bank, Dodge, the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and by Powerade. Three down and seven to go. That's right, folks. Quaddy action coming up in a historical Quaddy matchup. Thomas County Central taking on Harris. Tell everyone, I'm Dan Garner, along with the legendary, the dean of Atlanta sports, <laughs> Bo Bach. And Bo, thanks for being with us. I'm looking forward to a classic Quaddy matchup tonight between these two. Dave, this has become a rivalry since 95. I mean, they, we talk about one-point games, give or take, but it's been Thomas County Central who's uh, owned Marist uh, since about 1995. Exactly, exactly. Twice in 96, twice in 97. And there you can look at uh, the four teams that are left in Quaddy, Marist and Thomas County Central. Of course, Marist with just one loss to Tucker this year. That came on Friday. Friday the 13th. Today's Friday the 13th, so they hope to change the fortunes there. And of course, Shaw and Thompson will meet tomorrow. They're going to look at what uh, Thomas County Central has done this year. Man, oh man, 3,540 rushing yards, also more than 1,000 in the air. They can pretty much do it all. They really can. Uh, this is a high scoring bunch. They've been scoring in bundles in the playoffs, Dave, and uh, I, I think we can expect a shootout tonight. When you take a look at some of the guys that have made the difference, Eric Walden, this kid is unbelievable. He's thrown for over a thousand. He's rushed for well over a thousand. This kid's going to be all over the place tonight. And he's uh, 6'1, 170. He's only a junior, and he's looking for a big game. He's piled up the yardage with Thomas County Central. And also number uh, 28, too, is going to be a big guy, too. Moses Cochran will certainly keep her eye out on him. They're going to look at what Marist has done this year. Uh, equally impressive on the ground, over 3,000 yards rushing. Of course, Marist trying to break that uh, jinx against Thomas County Central, and they've got the athletes to do it this year. They do, and uh, in fact, they've got Sean McVay at quarterback. Sean McVay has uh, rushed for almost uh, 1,000 yards this year. You see uh, you know, 685 right there, but he's uh, actually got more yards than that. 5.5 yards per carry for uh, Sean. Alan Chadwick, the head coach, 27th season at Marist. We caught up with him earlier in the week to talk about tonight's game plan against Central. Well, we're, we're a wishbone triple option team. We run a little bit of wing T type stuff off of our wish, wishbone uh, offense, but uh, basically we're option. We run the option about nine different ways and, and uh, try to get the ball to a number of different running backs. Our quarterback, Sean McVay, is a very good option quarterback. Um, our fullback, Mike Lashcody, has improved as steadily as the season's gone on. And um, we don't throw the ball a whole lot, but what we've been doing off play action has been very effective for us this year. We're not very big on defense, so we, we've got to move around to keep people off of them. And um, we've basically gotten better as the season's gone on, but we're still a very young football team overall, very young, only playing two seniors on, off, on, on defense and four on offense. Coach Chadwick with over 200 career victories, 18 years as head coach at Marist, ETSU grad taking on a Coach Pilcher, who is an App State grad. It's a little Southern Conference robbery, I guess, going on here tonight, but nonetheless looking forward to a great game. Two winning coaches, absolutely, and, and don't forget that Marist this is the 21st year of uh, having a, a winning record, the 20th right. consecutive year in the playoffs, so they've really got a cook in that Marist school. Unbelievable tradition. Well, time to meet the uh, third member of our broadcast team, the memorable and legendary GPTV. John Nelson. John, what do you got for us? Well, thank you, legendary Dave Garner. This Georgia Dome turf has been less than kind to Marist head coach Alan Chadwick. When you've got this late in the year, he's 1-8. One 1-8 and eight. One and eight against teams from South Georgia. His last appearance here in 1999, he lost on a last-second field goal to Mount Zion Jonesboro. And before that, you had two semifinal losses to Thomas County Central. And there's an important anniversary that's coming up tomorrow. It is the sixth anniversary of what is commonly referred to now in high school lore in the state of Georgia as the Pilcher Pass. 
one point down late. Joe Burns rolls right, finds a receiver in the back of the end zone. I asked Coach Pilcher about that anniversary, and he said on that particular day, no one was stopping anybody, and I just wanted to go home. So, talking to Coach Chadwick now today, he says, maybe a little more play action. It's going to be predicated on what Thomas County Central does. Predicated being a big word, just means on what they're going to do. Also, Pilcher, you look at him on the sidelines, he's not at 100% himself. He's been sick as a dog for the last four days. That's his words, sick as a dog. So, he's going to try and get some sleep maybe after tonight, because he'll have five days at least rest if he goes to the next round. Sick as a dog, he hasn't slept in four days trying to get this game plan together. Pilcher also says he's not going to try and do anything different out of the ordinary. He's going to dance with the lady that brung him, especially with quarterback, with Alex Walden, who's compared to another guy here on the sidelines that runs here at least eight times a year, maybe ten if you include the exhibition season, a guy named Michael Vick, number seven, who's vaguely familiar with how things work here on the turf. One other issue having to do with the turf and turf shoes. Talked to head coach Pilcher about the turf shoes, and he said that how things are going with his team, he's had them in the past, They've just been kind of laying around with all the time that they've spent with all the time they've done here. Everybody's wearing shoes. Ninth graders may have them, but at the same time, they're not wearing the size that they may like. Let's go back upstairs to the legendary Bo and the legendary Dave. <laughs> all right. Thanks, John. That's the scoop right there. Getting ready for kickoff. Again, a big matchup in Quad A, Marist, and Thomas County Central coming up. Welcome back live to the Georgia Dome. Again, Dave Garner along with Bobach. Maris and Thomas County Central set to kick things off, and here come the War Eagles. 12-1 and one this year. Of course, Alan Chadwick, as we mentioned, the head coach, 27 seasons. He's an institution. He is in uh, 202 wins, only 32 losses, Dave. And uh, this Maris club, though, is, is a young uh, bunch. And uh, he's got to, he's, they've got to tackle well today. They've been on again, off again. And he's hoping for a solid performance tonight, obviously. Uh, but this young defense of his has got to tackle well against Thomas County Central. Chadwick, of course, the all-time winningest coach in Maris history as well. And here come the Yellow Jackets of Thomas County Central, 13-0 out of Region 1, Quad A. Ed Pilcher, 12th season as the head coach of that program. And we need to look at what they've done per game this year. 300 yards rushing right around 100. 400 yards of offensive ball game right there, Bo. That's something else. And they run the veer. And we're going to see the beauty of, of high school football, <laughs> Dave, is that in the course of today, we might have seen maybe seven or eight different uh, offenses, you know, from the triple option to the veer, which we're going to see now. And we're also going to see the wishbone from Maris. Um, you know, just, just tremendous football for uh, aficionados who, who like that offense. Central, of course, five state championships. It's six years in the 90s, and they're going to look at their road to the Dome. Of course, Woodward Academy in the first round. Ups and Lee knocked off defending champ Statesboro early on, and of course, McNair in the quarterfinals. Thomas Central getting it done over those guys. And look at the points that they put up there, too. 48, 37, and 37. Exactly. Is Alan Chadwick. So Central will kick things off. Marist back deep. That was in. Jonathan Abarca will boot it away. And we are set and ready. McVeigh, the quarterback, back deep on a high short kick, taken at the 32 by the upback. And not much going on there at all. Patrick Gleason, the tight end, brings it out. Coach, and good field position for Maris. Coach Pilcher tried to pull a cute one there with that mortar <laughs> kick, and uh, Maris uh, did not know, or at least they chose not to, but you can call for a fair catch on a mortar kick. Marist, of course, quarterback Sean McVeigh, as we talked about in the Open, a guy that has certainly gotten it done all over the field there. Number 18, 5'10", 170 pounds, and he's just a junior, and they're going to look at his numbers, 42 of 59 for 685, three touchdowns and three picks. First down at 10 for the War Eagles, ball with the 33. Five, six guys in the box for Central. They'll put eight up there. Top sweep, Chili Davis, spins off a of one tackle, but not another, and brought down hard by big number 34, Davis. That's number 34, Ricky Davis. And Brian Steed had that block uh, on the edge there. Could not get it. Well, this play might have gone for big yards, and that was a great defensive play. Central, of course, likes to play the run, as we mentioned, eight in the box at times there. And let's take a look at that starting offense. Again, the tackles, Adams, Rumsey, guards, Collinger, Redder, and Norwood, the center. 
we'll take a look at the rest of the guys here in a second. So a loss of one on that last play, second down and 11. And the give is up the middle, bounces off of one tackler. Maybe a yard or two, but that's about all. Michael Ash Cody, the big fullback, number 32 with the carries, first carry of the night. He's been that workhorse, Dave. 150 carries plus, right around 800 yards, 13 touchdowns during the season. And then you get a look at the rest of the offense for Marist. Again, Chris Chili Davis, Steed, Gleason, Wooten, the outstanding wideout, Hogan, the tight end. Third and long. A big play coming up right here. 5 2 look for Central. Twins with a slot to the left. And McVay going to keep it. Breaks the tackle. 40 still on his feet. Across midfield and into Central territory at the 48. What a run by Sean McVay. Well, you see how McVay is going for big yards this year. He's a darter and uh, making people miss. He's made some great moves there. Look at him carrying the ball on the outside hand. No one gets a good shot at him either, Dave. Not at all. He made that happen there. Ben Williams turned him in. Otherwise, it could have been more. Had a lot of real estate there in front of him. So McVay already making his presence felt. First down and 10. Ball at the central 49. Receiver wide right wing T look now. And in motion, McVay keeper. Not much though over the right side. Nice job up front. Well, one thing that we see already is Thomas County Central is very quick on defense, and they're noted for that. And uh, they're they, they really get to the ball. William Spears, Rice, and Marable, the front four there. Also Pickett, Davis, Thomas, and Eric Rice, the linebacker, number 22, a standout. And you can look at the secondary with Kavoris, Daniels, Brooks, and Walden. Brandon Walden, number eight. 53 tackles this year as a safety. Second down and nine. Davis in motion. McVay, another keeper, going to drive it inside the 45, down to about the 42. So a good chunky yardage there on second down. will bring up third and short. And we'll take another look at that one there. McVay so far on the keeper getting it done, Bo. Yeah, you see him right there. He's a tough kid, and he hope that this game doesn't go into overtime like <laughs> Dublin and Laney did because McVay already, what, what, he's got about uh, four or five carries. Exactly. And what a ball game that was, too. And our triple-A contest there. Dublin, of course, pulling it out in overtime. Third down and three. Wing T once again. Motion to the left, misdirection play. And stacked up Ash Cody, the ball carrier. Going to be about a yard shy, though, that first down, it looks like. And a nice job once yeah, again is. by that jacket defense. They get to the ball. They swarm to the ball. They've only averaged giving up about 12 points a ball game on defense. 75 rushing yards, so they, they play the run first in the pass. That's obvious. Fourth and a long one. And they're going for it. Ward goes up to the line. This time a split eye formation. Receiver to the right. McVay on the keeper. Going to cut across. He's got the first down to the 36. Gutsy call there by Coach Chadwick. Early on in this ball game, Spears and Marable combined for the hit. But not until a gain of five yards for Marist. Gutsy call, but here you see McVay. Look at him read the defense. His eyes are always up. He could have made the pitch, but he, he just wanted to pick up that first down. He thought that he could do it. Marist in the final rankings, ranked as high as number four. Of course, Thompson number one in quad A. Thomas County Central at number three. So a pair of top five teams here going at it in the dome. And this time to give this to Ash Cody, the fullback who drives ahead. will pick up a couple inside the 35. Brandon Walden came up to make the stop. Offensive line for Maris doing a pretty good job. And don't forget, this is a new offensive line. Lost four to Division I schools from last year's offensive line. These kids have overachieved for Maris. And uh, not a lot was expected of them. And this team has really come together. Great camaraderie, great togetherness. I mean, you take a look at what this team's done over the last five years. Three undefeated seasons during the regular season of 98, 99, and 2000. Just one loss in 2001 to Tucker and a loss this year against Tucker. And McVay looking deep down the field. Has a man there, but a flag and it comes flying into the 10. I believe Hodge Wooten was held in the secondary. Kavoris Daniels may have gotten some of that jersey on the way yeah. by. Daniels was beaten, and I could see it coming on that last uh, you know, fourth and one play. Uh, they're giving them uh, single coverage, a man coverage uh, outside. And if Maris decides to throw the ball tonight, uh, they could make some big plays. To look at Coach Chadwick there once again. Of course, Marist 
11 of their losses in the last seven years. Defensive pass interference, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's a big one right there. This is a great opening drive for Marist. Takes uh, the Thomas County Central crowd out of the game, and they're really moving the sticks. 11 losses last seven years, four of them to Thomas County Central, though, for Marist. Word is trying to turn their fortunes tonight. First down and 10 inside the 20 option play. He's got the corner, 10 5 driving, and touchdown for Anderson Russell, number 34. Had some room over the left side, he'll punch it in from 19 out. Well, that McVay, though, is impressive because he held that ball until the very last instant, made the defender commit, and then made the pitch. Here it is right here. Watch him, watch right there. Makes a great pitch. And then a lot of strength at the end of that run. Chase Dodge, the left footer, will try to tack on the PAT here. Anderson Russell, six foot, 170 pounds sophomore, had a touchdown in the quarterfinals against Griffin and gets the Warriors Eagles on the board here on their opening drive. And Dodge with the PAT is through there. And it's 7 0 with 7.03 left in the opening quarter. Maris with the lead over Thomas County Central. Great opening drive, and of course this is a team that you'd think with the with the history or lack thereof against Central that they might be a little bit down, but a big confidence builder right there in that first oh, drive. Oh, that really is. I mean, you know, <laughs> Maris was hoping for maybe the law of averages to kick in with this meeting with Thomas County Central. They didn't need it. They just played football in that opening drive and took it to TCC. You know, Marist has always been this kind of team. You know, going back to the early 90s, uh, running backs, you know, little running backs, but just great heart. You know, big Valentines pumping them under the numbers. Guys like Mike McClain, uh, you know, coming out all the way up to Kelly Rhino, you know, just in recent years. And they've always been a spunky, fast little team. And there you can look at that scoring drive. Nine plays, 52 yards, 457. And, of course, Russell with that 19-yard touchdown run. Chase Dodge to kick it away. Cole Greer, number 41, the tight end, the deep man, stands at his own five. Of course, Marist was here in 99 and lost 10-7 to Mount Zion Jonesboro in the semifinals. Marist, of course, opening in 1901, originally as a college. And a high but short kick going to be taken inside the 20. And that is number 34, Ricky Davis, on the carry, but he is hit and dropped at the 23. Good coverage there by the War Eagles. That was great coverage. Great coverage. Thomas County Central went after the Mavericks kicker, too. Well, that, that he'll go back, and uh, that, will, that will get their dander up. Number 25, all over that one, Peter Guchin-Ritter, the big linebacker. And they're going to look at Eric Walden, who will come into the ball game for the first time tonight. 70 of them. 135 for 1151, six touchdowns, but 10 interceptions. They have a minus five turnover ratio, and you don't normally see teams with that this far in the playoffs. We've seen the phone, now let's take a look at the veer. And Walden with the give to the fullback. That's Cochran, number 28, with the early carry there. Of course, Cochran pretty much does it all. This guy is all over the place. Kick returner, over 1,100 yards rushing this year. They're going to look at the offense. Palmer or the tackles. Black Crosby, your guards, and Watkins anchoring the middle of that offensive line. And, of course, Dawson Cochran, the split backs. Guyton and Lovejoy, your receivers, and Greer, the tight end. Second down, driving ahead, and that's Walden on the keeper. And he'll have a couple up to the 31. So it'll be third down and about two and a half. Coach Chadwick was really concerned with his team's tackling ability. Maris has to tackle well to win this game. Young, young, only one senior on this defense. And Central's got several juniors on their side, too. We talked about a lot of guys mm -hmm. coming back, of course, next year. Walden's a junior. Dawson, Cochran, those guys are juniors as well. Third down, two. And the give is straight ahead. And that's David Dawson, number 36, who's going to be close to a first down. Well, but I don't believe he got there, though. Depends on the spot. It's going to be very close. They're going to look at Marist, how they line up defensively there. Quinn, Van Volkenberg, Pinelli, and Crawford, your down linemen. And the linebackers, Black, Andrew Deet, and Guchenritter. A good trio there. Those guys will come up and hitch, especially Deet, a sophomore. This guy's been impressive. And, of course, the secondary, that's Chris Ashcody, the younger brother of fullback Michael Milton, Davis, and Card. Coach told Gucci Reader to play like Gucci Reader. <laughs> and look oh, at that. Oh, baby. Great shot by our GPTV camera crew there. 
And they roll the ball over, and they're going to say a first down by literally the nose of the football. Coach Pilcher on the sideline for Thomas County Central, a team, as we mentioned, their last state championship in 97. They won five state championships in the 90s out of six years in AAA, hoping to add a quad A one here this year. And on first down, the give is back to Dawson. He'll have about three across the 35. Well, you know, I, I talked about uh, Thomas County Central's defense being quick. You can see their offense already. I mean, they're not even in space yet, but they hit the hole very quickly. Lost to Statesboro last year in the second round. Of course, Statesboro, the defending state champ, but those guys went out early this year. And the big question tonight is, can the Jackets extend their streak over Maris to five in a row? Second down and eight. Split backs. And this time Walden on the keeper spins inside. Nice job there by number 45, Andrew Deet, the linebacker who turned him back in. Andrew Deet almost overran that. It was kind of like a little Keith Brooking look there, you know, <laughs> overrunning a play when, when he first came into the league. And, you know, fast linebackers like that just have to uh, be able to uh, keep under control. Speaking of Keith Brooking, of course, we'll see East Coweta a little bit later on tonight. That's right. Taking on Parkview, number one in the country, in uh, the state, number two in the country in a lot of polls. Walden rolling left, looking to throw this time. Has a man downfield, completes to Jonas Jones across midfield and down to the Marist 46. Nice pass and catch there by the Yellow Jackets. Well-designed play at the uh, Marist uh, school in a zone, and they flooded the zone, two people in that area, and then flared as they, as they hit that area, and he settled down in the seam. Jones only about 130 pounds, not a very big guy, and we're going to see that a lot on both sides of the ball tonight, Bo. Not a lot of size, but, boy, these teams really get 11 to the football. Not much happening there. Cochran, the give straight ahead, maybe a yard, yard and a half or so. That's about all, though, and just inside or right at the 45. Coach Chadwick, he'd love to be able to uh, – turn back Thomas County Central here and have them not answer their opening drive. Second down nine when you talk about Central, of course, a lot of great athletes. Charlie Ward, the 93 Heisman winner. Joe Burns, as we yeah, talked about sure. a little bit, as John mentioned in the open. Second and nine. Twins right slot. Option play. Walter going to keep. 40, 35, 30. Still on his feet. Watch out, folks. 20, 10, and he is gone. Eric Walden into the end zone for the touchdown. 45 yards. What a beautiful play by Walden. You know, when you have youngsters, uh, you're running the option. But very often, uh, Walden and McVeigh are, are, are not typical because they both have patience. They see it, then they go. And, you know, they're not antsy. Watch this. Look, look, look. See, he, he felt the space. He felt the, the light that just took off. And, boy, he can pick them up and put them down. Not about reading that defense, man. You said it. Jonathan Abarca will try to tack on the PAT here and tie this thing up with 3.21 to go in the opening quarter. Abarca with some good numbers this year. And PAT is no good. Wide to the right. So at 7 to 6, Marist maintains a one point lead here in this opening quarter. But I tell you what, both offenses right now got to be happy for those offensive coordinators. Very much. It was almost too easy for Thomas County Central. Watch this. You know, coach talked about tackling. They have to tackle well. Well, in order to tackle well, you have to at least get an arm on an offensive player. <laughs> that didn't happen there at all. No. Abarca missing the PAT. 53 of 62 in that department. Four of six on field goals this year, as long as the 37, but misses there. And you're going to look at the scoring drive for the Jackets. Eight plays, 77 yards, 348. They did it in less time than Maris did. And of course, that big 45-yard touchdown run by the quarterback and standout QB, Eric Walton. Walton got some height on him, 6'1", 170. Mm -hmm. Coach Chadwick now will try to counter on offense. And one thing about Central, if you're Marist, vulnerable to the passing game. As we talked about, they stack a lot of guys in the box here, so don't be surprised to see the Warriors throw it up there. A long kickoff by Abarca. Puts it inside the five. And that's Sean McVay, the quarterback, will bring it out. Trying to get to that wedge on the far side of the field, but won't do it. And nice coverage by the Jackets. They bring him down at the 11. 
Actually lost continuity with the wedge, and uh, wedge had taken off, and and he went in a different direction. Didn't see anything there. Yeah, the passing game is there for Marist, and uh, I was just looking at uh, McVeigh's uh, stats, and uh, he was uh, 42 completions out of 59 attempts. They've not thrown it much. Right. Of course, Marist, North DeKalb County. Coach Chadwick from Decatur. Long line of Chadwicks from Decatur. Well, they were they were great. He and his brothers. First down attempt from the 11. McVeigh going to roll left and going to keep. And he's got room 20 and all the way up to the 21. So a gain of right at 10 on first down. Eric Rice had to bring him down, the big senior linebacker. So if Coach Chadwick feels like it here, it's going to be second and short. Might be a time for a little play action. And maybe let's try that passing game. Exactly. Haven't seen a lot of Brian Steed so far. Number 21, he's really the big play guy here. Maybe they'll go up top to him. And you're going to look at it. Bay, as you said, Bo, he really reads that defense mm -hmm. well. Both these quarterbacks do. Got some of the defenders turned around there. And the measurement. And it is going to be a first down. Yeah, right at 10. So Maris will reset here. As we said, tradition, Triple A state champ in 89. As you mentioned in the open, 20th consecutive season in the playoffs. And you're going to look at McVay's numbers early on here in this first quarter. Five rushes and a bunch of yards. First down and 10 at the 21. 240 left in the first. Game, game. And this time, McVay will no. option it out. And that is Steve, the guy we talked about, who gets the football for the first time tonight. He'll have about five or six on first down. And good block there at the point of attack. I think there was Chili Davis with the block. You don't see it in your screen right now. Anderson Actually, Russell, that was Hodge yeah. Wooten. Yep. Russell also at, out there, too, number 34. Great downfield blocking and something that a lot of folks don't see when you think about receivers. You think about catching the football, but... Steed this season, 435 yards, 6.6 yard average though when he puts his hands on the ball. And this time, Ash Cody drives ahead five yards or close to it. Brandon Walden brought him down, but might be another Maris first down here. Ash Cody had 150 carries this year for 766 yards. He averages 5.1. Let's go ahead and throw it on down to the sideline. John Nelson standing by. Speaking of the proverbial devil, talk to Michael Ishkuti after that first drive, and he said that the team really isn't surprised that they could get on the scoreboard with their first drive on the Georgia Dome floor. But he did say one thing about the Thomas County defense, even though he is averaging five yards a clip. He said that about that defense, they hit really hard. <laughs> Guess that's why they're here at the Dome. And they're not known as a real physical defense, though. Central's not, but they fly 11 the ball, and they will hit you. There's the option play there, and a nice play to Anderson Russell, who will pick up about three yards that time. Uh, McVay took a good little shot there, but got it away. Ricky Davis with the tackle. And uh, Ricky Davis just discarded the blocker. Strong kid. You'll see it right here as he cleans him up. Davis with 40 tackles this year, had an interception return against Woodward in round one for Central. And, of course, Anderson Russell, as I mentioned, just a sophomore. That kid doesn't look like a sophomore. I'll tell you what. Davis had 40 tackles this year. So, second down at five for Marist. As you get a look at McVeigh. And Davis in motion this time. And McVeigh looking to throw. Has a man wide open at midfield. Anderson Russell out of the backfield. Takes it all the way down close to the 35. And that he, was wide open, Bo. He wide open. He went unchecked, and the uh, the defensive back who was on him took the bait on the play action, which was coming to his side. He comes up right here at this point and lets the, the receiver go. Russell not known as a receiver that much. He's only had a couple catches this year, but makes a big one there, and it's first down and 10. And once again, the offense is driving in this football game. Ball at the 36, first and 10. And McVay on the keeper, but going nowhere this time. And Central 
all over that one. Eric Rice, number 22. I got a feeling we're going to be calling his name all night long. Yeah. He's made a lot of big plays this year. 62 tackles, 14 for losses. McVay's uh, first carry for a loss. Going to lose a yard and a half, and you get to look at some of the fans here painted up tonight. Of course, a good crowd on hand here at the Georgia Dome. Dave Garner along with Bo Bach bringing you all the action. And the final seconds will tick off the clock here in quarter number one. Again, Marist with a one-point lead over Thomas Central. And the Yellow Jackets missing the extra point after Ed their Pilsen. touchdown. Excuse me, Dave. 161-54 and one. We've got a couple oh. of winning coaches here. <laughs> Definitely. We'll step aside and be right back with quarter number two. Again, you're watching the GHSA State Semifinals right here on GPTV. Well, the Yellow Jackets of Thomas County Central had to travel more than 230 miles to Atlanta, but so far it's Marist who's traveling up and down the field right here. Their offense is really working. Dave Garner along with Bo Bach as we open up quarter number two from the Georgia Dome. Again, the first of two quad A semifinals this weekend. And the Warrior goes up. Marist with a one-point lead over Central, and they've got the football. And the give is to Brian Steed, the senior, up the middle for about three yards, punches it inside that 35. Coach Chadwick said you'd see a lot of options from them, obviously, and, and they just, they, they do it all. There's nothing left in their bag of tricks by the end of the game. We talk about Steve, the big play guy, actually had the longest punt return in school history, 74 yards in 2001 versus Cedar Shoals, also the shortstop for the baseball team. And you talked about Chili Davis, uh, number 20, Chris Davis. Chili, of course, a name that he got from the baseball field, an outfielder on the 2002 state championship baseball team as well. So some good athletes out there on the field tonight for Marist. Third down and seven, big play here. McVay can option it out. That's Steve who is hit and stood up. Nice job by Ricky Davis and that central defense stringing that play out towards the sideline. Central uh, has been really good at the point of attack. And they're very strong. And, you know, Maris this year has gotten pushed around a little bit. You know, they've got good quicks on on, uh, on their offense, but they, they've gotten pushed around a little bit. And uh, Thomas County Central at the, at the point of attack is very, very strong. Marist, of course, went for it on fourth and one while ago on that opening drive at fourth and nine. They will look to boot it away here. And Brian Steed also doubles as the punter stands back at midfield. Brandon Walden, the return man for the Jackets. And you can look at the total yards. Marist 93, Central 77 here in this first half. And a little pooch kick there. Walden with the fair catch and will take it in at the 10. So Central, in order to counter, will have to go 90 yards here on offense. But again, they have the athletes to do it as well. 7-6, Marist on top here in the Guade semifinal. Never let a punt go beyond 10 yards, the 10-yard line. You, you, you put your heels on, on the 10-yard line and you make sure you, you catch it. Of course, Thomas County Central, well coached. Really play us together. We were talking about it before we came on tonight. Not a lot of Division One prospects out there for either team, but they really play together. And the give is to the fullback there. That's Dawson. And we'll have a couple yards up to about the 12, and that's all second and eight. I think the pass is going to be there as well. When teams are, are, are such good option teams, you, know, you really have to pack the line of scrimmage. You have to put as many as you can in the box, and you're relegated to playing man outside. So if you can throw it, you can usually do pretty well. This is Bill Yeoman's uh, uh, offense, of course. The Vera invented that uh, Houston. I played against a guy named Warren McVay, who could really run the Veer. Another McVay here tonight. He can do it a little bit. A little fade pattern there. A little miscommunication, though, as the intended target there looked like Jordy Williford pulled up a little early there. He was running a little quick hitter there, and uh, Walden was going up top. Well, again, it, the you know, semblance of a very sophisticated offense, if the, if the cornerback squats, you go. If the corner you know, is upright, then you break it off. So the quarterback is reading the same thing that the receiver is. Right. Third down and nine, big play offensively for the Jackets right here. Marist, eight guys, eight 
not in the box. And Walton looking to throw. Heavy pressure gets out of there. Spins off of one tackler and spins up to the 14. We're going to be well shy of that first down. Going to be fourth and about seven. Good defensive call. Maris blitz that time. Pinelli and Deet combining for the stop there on Walden, so teams will exchange punts here. Walden's a little bit hurt. He may have an ankle. It's easy on this carpet to twist an ankle and do something. Took a little shot there at the end. And sometimes that's all it takes. And a crazy punt formation, too. That's something that's a signature of this Thomas County Central team here. They'll split everybody out. And that's Hunter Harper, number 16, who will boot it away. Heavy rush, low liner. And not a great punt, but it does take a jacket roll across midfield all the way down to the 45. So not a bad job to get that thing out of there. But a, a good job of Maris not to field it. A low liner like that, it's easy to muff, especially on this car. But 40-yard punt takes a nice little roll there, so Maris will be back on offense. So how do you like that opening drives for both teams result in touchdowns? The next two drives after that result in punts, obviously both teams' ability to adjust on defense, and they're going to look at Walden on the sideline getting that ankle. And that up. would be a huge loss for Thomas County Central, and he's got to get that taped up, and hopefully he'll be at 100%, or almost. Wing T luck. Quick pitch to Davis, trying to turn the corner. He's got some room up the sideline there. Stepped out, though. Just across Central Territory, right at the 49. But still a good pickup, five yards there on first down. Chris Davis here. Now watch it at the point of attack. The Maris is really not getting the block. You couldn't see it there. That was after the block. But Chris Davis looked like he could have gone a long way if he couldn't have gotten a, could have gotten a little more at that block out there. And when you look at what these guys average per carry, 6.5 for Davis, 5.1 for Ash Cody, the fullback, 6.6 .6 for Steve. These guys, when they touch the football, they pick up yardage. They go north and south. And this time Ash Cody up the middle, got some room, 40, and all the way down to the 35. A gain of 15 yards on second down. Kavoris Daniels had to bring him in. Otherwise, that might have been six. It's pure wishbone. You know, you go wide, you go wide, you go wide, and then all of a sudden, that quick hitter right up the gut. Good blocking in there, too. Now you talk about offenses like this, and you think it's the same play over and over again when you run up the middle, but the thing that people don't always see is the fact that the offensive linemen are doing different things, right. opening up different holes mm -hmm. different ways. And if you're a defender, you got guys hitting you from different directions each and every play. So first down and 10, ball inside the 35 for Maris. McVeigh, keeper, room, 30, 25, and all the way down to the 22, pick up a 12. This is going to be a shootout tonight between <laughs> he and Walden. And that's why you, you really wish that Walden comes back with that ankle in good shape. Want to see both teams at full strength. Sure. McVeigh has really gotten it done here. We flashed up his numbers a while ago on five carries. Had it right around 40 yards or so. And he is really tacking onto that total tonight. He really has a feel for space. He knows where it is. Anticipates it. Right around 1,000 yards this year as a rusher. And you're going to look 6 to 39 now. Did take a loss in there, but he's gotten that back. So first down and 10. Ash Cody, the fullback, stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Ben Williams in on the stop. Number 60. 14 tackles this year, a junior. He's stout. <laughs> One of the bigger boys up front. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it. They don't have a lot of size no. up there. They'll admit that, but he is one of the bigger guys up there. And as you said before, people keep in mind, no real uh, major college uh, Division One prospects on either one of these schools. And both of them have had Buku big-time players in the past. Williams at about 2.30 there now. Second down and 10. And McVeigh. An audible there out of the wishbone. And he's going to pitch it out there to Davis. He's trying to turn the corner. 20 15. And down to the 14 goes Chris Davis. Boris Daniels pushed him out. That was Hodge Wood trying to give him the block out there at the you know, 5'11, 175. That's been Mara's problem. I, I keep talking about it. And if they ever do get a block out there, see, they just don't take a, somebody out of the play. We Thomas County Central, excuse me, they've always keeps their feet. Exactly, exactly. We talked about the ability of guys like Davis, a big athlete, six foot one seventy-five, but 
Get an outfielder, and now Coach Chadwick wants to call the timeout there. And he wants to talk things over with his Oregon offense there. First timeout called. Central with three here, 6.36 left in the half. And after that opening drive, it's been kind of back and forth. But the clock has moved because they've kept it on the ground here. Only seen a couple of attempts. Let's see what Coach calls here because it's third and short. And uh, he really wants to keep this drive alive. Well, if you're enjoying GHSA football live from the Georgia Dome, show your appreciation by becoming a member of GPTV. Log on to our website at www.gpb.org. It's easy, totally secure, and only takes two minutes. That's www.gpb.org. And thanks for supporting high school sports right here on GPTV. I'm a member. <laughs> It's one of the best in investments you can make, that's for sure. And we've gotten a lot of great response over the years from football here at the Dome. Now they're talking about moving some of the North Georgia High School basketball right. sectionals here into the Dome as well. Well, that'll be fun for the kids. Big time atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I guess I know those uh, Class A guys getting here playing at 9 a.m. may not always <laughs> think that right away. Rushing yards, Marist right now with the big advantage, and they've got the football and driving. Third down and short. Inline option, big play on the keeper, punches it down to the 10 and then is driven backwards, but he'll have it up for the first down. You're going to spot it at the 10 yard line, and uh, he's the babe, the boy. You might as well keep it with your money back. <laughs> yeah, don't. Uh, if it ain't broken, don't need fixing, yeah. I guess. And a lead block. And again, Eric Rice, number 22. You saw him kind of end up on the bottom of that pile and. As we said, number 22 will probably be called a good bit tonight for Central. Harris breaks the huddle. The 12 will Stembridge wide to the left. Wing key formation. First down and goal. McVay, keeper, cuts it back inside. He stood up at the 8. And that time, the Central defense read it nicely. Mm -hmm. That play has been there for him. Obviously picking up the first down on the play before that. Basically the same look. Adam Manus with a nice read. So now it's second down and goal. Ball just outside the eight. 526 and counting here in quarter number two. And this time Davis will shift over into the slot. Anderson Russell will come back into the backfield. McVay on the option, going to keep it, going to drive it, five punches it into the end zone for the touchdown. Goes Sean McVay. You know, you talk about vision with running backs. This is a quarterback with great vision. You know, you know he really is a, a uh, running back in this situation. It looks like he might have taken a shot to the ribs. Let's take a look and see if he did get one right there. Yep. And he comes off uh, holding his side as well. So we've got a couple of quarterbacks that may not be at 100%. <laughs> We're going to be banged up. This time next week, whoever advances on. And of course, the winner of this ball game taking on the Thompson Shaw winner that will play out tomorrow night. Here's Dodge for the extra point. And it's right through there. So Marist extends their lead to 14 6 with 5 10 left in the half. And they have really moved the football here. David, except for an interference call, we've been penalty free. We talked about two well coached football teams, and that they are. And there you can look at the touchdown once again there from a couple different angles. You see that shot at the end. Yeah, here it comes right there. Right under his arm, where he's carrying the ball. Brandon Walden trying to uh, deliver a shot there. It's number eight, the guy who got in there. He's wearing a black jacket. And you look at the scoring drive once again. Eight plays, 55 yards, 329. And neither team with a long drive. All their scores have been within about four minutes. Quick hitting offenses here tonight. Well, that seemed like a long drive. <laughs> <laughs> They've been eating up the clock, that's for sure. Of course, the uh, game that was before this, that Triple uh, A, Dublin and Laney, I think that thing was the better part of about three, almost three and a half hours, yes, I guess, with, with yep. the overtime. Mm -hmm. So Chase Dodge will kick it off once again. Cole Greer, number 41, back deep. Don't see a lot of tight ends 
as the return man, but that's the case for Central. It's a big guy who can make it happen on special teams. And Dodds will put that left foot into it, but once again, another short kick taken out the 17. And across the 25 to 30, and the 32-yard line for Ricky Davis. Both teams, Dave, don't want to fool around with the kickoff. They're just, you know, kicking that mortar <laughs> and pinning them on the sideline, and that makes it easy to, to uh, defend. Although you do give up a little bit of field, though, but I yeah. guess as dangerous as these guys are, though, they want to keep it out of their hands. Exactly. Tonight. So they're going to look at Eric Walden. We talked about him on the bench a while ago. We saw him getting that ankle taped up, that right ankle heavily taped. He's back, but he's a little gimpy. Yep, and you're going to look yeah. at his numbers. Four, 51 yards and a touchdown, so not bad at all there. Uh, that scoring drive. Give over the left side. That's Dawson, 36. Quick hit it. Dawson picks up a couple of three yards. Good looking backs and David Dawson, 36, and Moses Cochran, 28. These guys have combined for almost 2,000 yards on the year. They get a look at a tight shot of that right ankle of quarterback Eric Walden. You can tell it's tender. That takes a big, big part of their offense away. And of course, this turf, not as bad as it is in other no. places around the country, but it's still turf nonetheless. So second down and seven, little misdirection reverse there goes to Greer, the tight end. He turns the corner, he's got the first down and more, 50, and all the way down to 43 of Marist. What a run by Greer, the senior. Well, two things. They got something Marist didn't get. They, they got a block at the point of attack, and then Marist, he, he, you're going to see the block coming up here, right there, coming out of the screen, and now missed tackles, which is what Coach Chadwick was worried about. Ran right through a tackle there at midfield. Kept on going. If he had kept his feet, he probably would have picked up another 10 or 15 yards. Nonetheless, first down and 10. Ball at the 44 of Maris Central trying to drive here. And Walden on the keeper going to punch ahead with that tender ankle at all. Pick up close to four yards down to the 40. You could see he was uh, just a shade slow. You know, he wanted to, you wanted to plant and burst through that space. They just can't. Gooch and Ritter with that last hit. We talked about Maris, what they've done over the last five years. Uh, of course, Thomas County Central, not as impressive regular season-wise. A 98, 6 and 4, 6 and 4, 99, 5 and 5 in 2000, 6 and 4 just a year ago. But they have really turned it on here, 13 and 0. Uh-oh, Walden Room inside the 30. And a pickup of 13 yards going to be a first down. Chris Davis had to bring him down in the secondary. May have saved a touchdown. Well, he doesn't have to be fast if he's going to fool you. <laughs> and that was just a great, uh, great faking. Right there, takes it away. Another missed tackle. This is a team that doesn't panic when they do get behind. They were down 28-7 to early in the year against Thomasville. The rival came back and won that ball game. And Cochran, the give inside the 25, will punch it down to the 24. So it'll be second down and about five. They wins like that really give your team a lot of resolve. Mm -hmm. And then you, know, you yep. know you're in every game. Exactly. Don't ever count them out. And then a few weeks after that, though, the defense got going three straight shutouts. <laughs> they won nine in a row. Last minute win against Cairo. Region championship win over Ware County in the final week. Second down at five. Wins right. Little give. There's some room. Cochran inside the 15 and down to the 11. And another first down for Central. William Middleton, number 30, brought him down to the secondary once again. Great call from Coach Pilcher. I don't know if we've seen that counter in this look from the beard yet. Uh, but that's what that was. And uh, picked up big yard. Thomas County Central averaging... Right around 37 points a ball game, and that seems to be their lucky number because back in 96 when they won the state championship, they averaged 37 points, and that's what they've done this year. So here we go. And it gets straight ahead that time. That was Cochran, 28. On to carry, punches it inside the 10. Looks like Marist is trying to wear Walden out every chance they get. If they get a shot at them, <laughs> they're taking it. Kind of like a shark, you know, in the yeah. water there. Moses Cochran, five rushes, 26 yards here in this first half, the junior. So a second down and eight. They can get a first down without the touchdown if they get to about the one. Receiver wide left, that's Williford. And 
that end in motion. Greer in the give. Here's to Cochran, who cuts in and dives down to the six. Pretty good move of Cochran. David Pinelli, number 86, with the stop. And they'll have to carry the load with Walden Hurt. Take a look at it again. They wait for him to go by. You don't see a lot of these running backs for either teams going down on the first, no. first guy. They, yeah, the guy they all have great patience, as you mentioned earlier. So third down and five right here, ball on the six. Both teams looking for a big play. Man in motion, this time to the right side. And to give it straight forward, driving towards that goal line. And it's going to be Cochran with the carry, and they're going to say his knee hit down right at the three. Greg Van Volkenberg, the junior defensive tackle, with the hit that time. Two tight ends that time, a power offensive set. And the clock will stop a timeout with 36 seconds left in the half here. So time a factor now in Central. you got to think here that they're within striking distance, but if they don't get it here, fourth down. I don't know. What do you do? You go for it? You kick that field goal? No, I think you go for it. You, 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 uh, you, you have to keep pace with Marist. And you are, the, you are the, you know, the team that you think is dominant in this game. You have to sell that to your kids. You have to. Of course, they missed that extra point, too, after that touchdown. Well, coach so is probably shaky. telling them now, guys, we're going to go for two. Let's score here. We're going to go for two. And uh, that way you can leave them on the field. And you know, maybe a uh, you know, quick play call. And we'll take a look at Coach Pilcher right there. Coach Pilcher, as we mentioned, a lot of success. 12 years as head coach at Thomas County Central. Make sure everybody knows the snap count. Oh, yeah. No false starts here. Uh, Central's a team that rushed for over 3,500 yards this year. Right now they need three to get into the end zone. Back at the timeout, 36 seconds left. Fourth down and two. And they need to get it just inside the one. Split backs. And give. They go to the left side. Touchdown, Cochran. Moses Cochran, number 28. In the end zone with 32 seconds left in the half. We ran it with authority, Dave. They knew exactly what they were doing, where they were going. And Russ Cochran you know, runs low to the ground. He's got good body lean. Watch him here. Boom, powers his way in. And as you said, Bo, they're going for two here. Trying to tie this game up. Well played first half by both teams. Pretty penalty free, and now Marist will burn a timeout. They were late getting a guy off, and the defense wants to talk about it here, trying to preserve that lead. Right. Defensively, they've only given up right around 16 points of all game this year. As we take another look at the touchdown. Right there, another missed tackle. See that body lean? Look at that. That's a great running back. Cochran going north and south, too. I haven't seen a lot of east-west running here. These, these folks get up and down the field, both both teams. We're going to look at the student body in the house tonight. Folks always fired up, painted. <laughs> Good crowd on hand. And they're going to look at that scoring drive. A little bit more of a sustained drive this time. Only took them four and a half minutes. <laughs> but uh, 10 plays, 67 yards, of course, culminating in that three-yard touchdown run. An eternity. <laughs> <laughs> in this ball game, Trying to make up for the uh, time that AAA ball game took. We're playing this uh, quad A matchup pretty quick. And, of course, later on tonight, 5A action live here at the Georgia Dome as Parkview and East Calhoun gets set to go. Right now, a good ball game, though. Marist up by two, but Central... Going for two to tie it up. They score here. It's a momentum changer. All in on the center. Going to try to boot leg, and he's not going to get there. And maybe favoring that ankle a little bit. He went down. Maris, good play defensively. Him to back in the backfield. And the score will remain 14-12. to 12. You know, a strange call. Uh, I, I guess they thought that Maris was going to bite, and he'd be out there all alone. And... Uh, Knowing Coach Chadwick, he probably said to him, guys, watch the naked bootleg. You know, defensive end, make sure you don't crash. Make sure you stay at home. And you saw Shannon Quinn, number 69, right here, make the play. Yep. 
And also on that ankle, can't make a cut that he wanted to make. No. And he was still favoring that ankle, too, coming off the sideline. He was really hobbling. Strange call, considering the fact that uh, he's so tender. Right. Having to plant on that right mm -hmm. foot, too. You almost think you have to spring him to the left. There's obviously somebody re ready for wrestling season. <laughs> A lot of the uh, winter seasons around the state of Georgia have already started with high school basketball and wrestling. So Jonathan Abarca will kick off for the Jackets. And it looks like Hodge Wooten, 24, back deep for Marist. 32 seconds left in the half again. Dave Garn along with Bo Bach bringing you all the action live at the Georgia Dome. First of two, Quade semifinals playing out over the weekend. And this one taken at the 11 by Davis, across the 20, 25, and it's slung down hard at the 27. And with 26 seconds left here, you got to wonder if the War Eagles are content with a two-point lead or if they're going to try to make something happen. Well, they've been getting man coverage uh, outside. Let's see if uh, maybe they decide to throw the ball. Of course, you'd, you'd prefer to have a little better field position. Yeah, right. exactly. Don't want to make a mistake here, No, that's you can't for sure. make a mistake. And that's one thing that has really been a signature of this Marist football program. They don't make a lot of mistakes. But it looks like they do have the safety yeah. valve in there, and indeed McVay will take a knee, and they'll let the clock run, and that should be it for the first half here at the Georgia Dome. So Marist came in here trying to break a four-game winless streak against Thomas County Central that dates back to 1996. Central has owned the robbery, but Marist trying to turn their fortunes as these teams step up into Quad A. And they have the two-point lead as time runs down here in this first half. Again, coming up, halftime, marching bands, and a whole lot more here at the Georgia Dome. Again, Dave Garner along with Bo Bach. As you see the teams go on into the locker room. Well, that was, the, you know, the, by virtue of the fact that they couldn't convert that two-point conversion, the momentum, in a sense, still stays with Marist. And, and I think if they had gone into the locker room, having tied that up with a two-point conversion, probably would be fired up in their locker room. Exactly, and they, they still have the lead. That's the thing they can't forget about. But if you're if you're Century, you got to feel good too coming back and still in that uh, in that ball game there. Let's go ahead and throw it on down to John Nelson, who's standing by with the coach. As I'm standing by, he's walking up. Solid first half, great decision making by Sean so far. Well, he's doing a good job. I just hope he can keep it up second half. There's a long way to go. Now let's talk about Sean a little bit. He took a shot to the hand with a face mask. How is he physically? He's fine. He's the toughest kid we got, and he's the best one we got. And he's going to be back out there this half. He's yep. And also going on, you were talking to me earlier about using play action. You got a little bit useful with that with some long plays down the field to throw them off balance. Well, we got to keep them back off of us. You know, we run the option, and uh, we just got to keep them back off of us so we don't play downhill on us. And defensively, are you happy with the way things are falling out so far, only holding them two to the 12 points, but there's some missed tackles in there too? Well, there's some missed tackles. We've definitely got to do that better if we're going to have a chance to win in the second half. Any other things that we need to throw up or that'll be... Things to point, points to ponder, I guess. Well, it's going to be a 48-minute ball game, and it's going to be hanging on at the end. So we're, hopefully we're going to be ready. All right. Head coach Alan Chadwick, thanks for your time. Go for it. You've got a two-point lead. Time's ticking. And what we're going to do is we'll send it right back upstairs as he tries to figure out a play to keep his lead at two. All right. Thanks a lot, John. We'll go ahead and send it to a break. Again, Marist and Thomas County Central. Good ball game here. 14-12. War Eagles on top. We'll step aside and be right back with halftime right after this. Back to halftime. Again, they're going to look at the score. Marist up 14-12 on Thomas County Central in the first of two quad semifinal matchups taking place this weekend at the Georgia Dome. And now we turn our attention to the field where the War Eagle Marching Band takes center stage from Marist School. Again, Scott Sparrowhawk is the director. Chris Vaughn, the drum major. Music from the rock opera Tommy. This is a band that took second at the Super Bowl of Sound in Carrollton in first place at the Peach State Marching Festival. Let's go ahead and take a listen.
Throw it on down to the field, John Nelson. We're hitting you right toward the end. Two birds, one name, one big band. How would you come up with Tommy, and where did you get all this velour? Well, we talk to the students every year about what they want to do, and Tommy was something we did at the stage production a couple years ago, and all the kids love the music. Pinball Wizard's a real popular tune, and um, they, that's what they wanted to do, so that's what we're doing. And you also talked about some unique things going on inside the band itself as the routine's going on and how they seem to be swapping roles at the same time. That's right. Some of the uh, horn players switch over to flags, and they do flag routines, and also some of them play drums during part of the show. And uh, it's really nice to have a, such a versatile, talented group of kids. It's kind of nice. Now, how much blood, sweat, toil, tears, and trouble went into this routine, or was it fairly easy to come up with off the top? Well, you know, there's always going to be uh, trouble coming up with stuff and, and having stuff that everyone can do. But, man, they have handled it. I'll tell you what, we've, we've done really well at our competitions this year. We came in first at our last competition in every category. And uh, they've made us real proud. All right, Scott Sparrowhawk, thanks for your time. Good yeah. job, man. All right. We'll send it back upstairs. All right, sounds good. Good job there at halftime. Let's go ahead and throw it to break. We'll be right back with the Thomas County Central Band. Right after this, you're watching the GHSA State Semifinals on GPTV. Welcome back live to the Georgia Dome again, Marist and Thomas County Central in the first of our two quad A semifinals this weekend. And of course, the word goes up by 2 14 to 12. We just got through listening to the Marist Marching Band, and now it's time for the Thomas County Central Marching Band of Yellow Jackets. Michael Mayhall is their director, and they're performing selections from Stop and Old Time Rock and Roll, the best of the nest. 
Thomas C.C. Marching Band, 140 members strong. Let's go ahead and throw it on down to the field. Forty plus band members for the Thomas County Central Marching Band, and what a performance! Let's go ahead and throw it on down to John Nelson. Thanks, guys. I have here a remnant of this routine. I got to ask you. First off, you got to replace this. How did you come up with the idea to do the stomp routine? 
We just decided it'd be a really good novelty tune to do a tune like that and use things other than musical instruments. You know, drummers are always making noise, playing on everything, beating on the counter, on the chairs, and we just set it up, and they did a, did a great job. It was very entertaining. Now, what did you do to get all of that stuff together? Because it's not something you normally see. Oh, no. Uh, we just we collected it from different junkyards in town, auto parts stores and places like that. It brought it from home, farms, different, different all, all over town. All right, Mike Mayall, thanks for your Thank time. You much. And I heard that all those car parts guys, they're domestic, all banged on in the USA back upstairs. Thank you very much. You gotta, you gotta like that. You well, gotta like that. At least they went American with it right there. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the first half highlights. And indeed, there were plenty of them to talk about between Marist and Thomas County Central. And we take a look early on, Bo. Of course, uh, the teams were driving up and down the field. And Anderson Russell with the opening touchdown for Marist. Sean McVay with the great pitch. He's looked wonderful in this first half, as has Eric Walden before he got hurt. But these are two option quarterbacks that are absolutely excellent. Here's Eric Walden right there. See the patience? that he has, and he rambled, uh, oh, I think about 41 yards for that one. Exactly, over 40 yards for Eric Walden, the uh, quarterback, and of course those were basically the opening drives, and you see McVay once again, this time on the keeper from eight yards out. This has a great feel for the space. And of course, Thomas County Central would answer on the other end, inside the five on fourth down and two. Moses Cochran over the left side, power running as you talked about. Yeah, power running, and they... they really ran that with authority. They could probably make a living off that play in this second half. And you see the breakdown right there. Score 14 to 12. Passing yards, not a lot. We didn't expect that, though, but the rushing yards. Marist 123 to 132. That's the one big stat that jumps out right there. And third down conversions, uh, two for four for Marist, one for three for Thomas County Central. No turnovers uh, from either of these teams, and a uh, little bit of an advantage in time of possession. But you can see the total yards are just about the same, and that's the way these two teams have always played, Dave. A uh, you know, couple of one-point losses for Marist. Marist hasn't right. been able to break through. These have all been close games. Coach uh, Pilcher standing by with their very own John Nelson down on the field. John. Okay, obviously, Coach, first question, how's Eric and everybody else's ankles right now? <laughs> Right at this point right here, everybody's ankle's fine. You know, we can't, there's no wait, wait, wait until next week or tomorrow. You know, he's going to suck it up just like everybody else got bumps and bruises. We're all going to play. Now, also, you were getting some good work in the running game with Moses late in the half. You seem to be getting the momentum late in the second quarter. Well, you know, it's been a, it's been a war, and we expected it. You know, there's been three possessions by them and three possessions by us, and they scored twice, we scored twice. They converted the extra points, and we didn't. You know, that's basically, basically that's it in a nutshell. We know what we got to do, and it's just, you know, we got to convert. We got to do a better job defensively of tackling, you know, when we get in those positions to do so, and then uh, uh, just make every possession count. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be a heck of a game for the second half, I'm sure. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Save your voice, and we'll send it back upstairs. All right, Coach Pilcher, a successful coach with a successful program. We'll take a time out and be right back with the third quarter kickoff again. GHSA State football semifinals live at the Georgia Dome. Dave Garner along with Bo Back. Bo Bach bringing y'all the action here. Again, 14 to 12. Marist on top of Thomas County Central. And Bo, a well played first half. And both teams really running the football up and down the field. No, uh, both teams move a option. One team's a wishbone team, the other team's a beer team. And uh, they run it to perfection. You see the, the way these two squads are turned out. The fans are, are great, as you can see there. But, the, you know, the. Look at Maris. Look at Thomas uh, County Central. You know their logos, their hats. The you know, coaches, the assistant coaches, all have uh, you know uh, the, the same gear on. These are two big-time programs in our state. A lot of feature stories this weekend here down at the Dome. Of course, uh, we had the SEC Championship here, high school playoffs. The Falcons are in town on Sunday, Peach Bowl coming up. So this has certainly been a busy uh, building. But a lot of the attention, of course, this weekend going to high school football. Uh, could it be an all going at uh, 5A final? Parkview, Brookwood both there. Of course, East Coweta, though, don't count those guys out. Also, Dooley County and East Coweta, teams that have five or more losses at the Dome. So a couple of Cinderella stories. And, of course, tomorrow you got Gainesville in AAA. Head coach Bruce Miller, who was here last year with North Forsyth. So a lot of, a lot of little feature stories like that from single A all the way up to the big boys. Dave, it's almost incredible when you look at the way the – you know, football power in this state has gone, come from Valdosta and America's uh, almost, uh, some would argue now, up to Gwinnett County. Sure. And uh, when you talk about, you know, Parkview, number two team in the nation, uh, 
you know, USA Today and Brookwood uh, Broncos always been a you know a formidable, formidable <laughs> uh, you know uh, contender under Coach Dave Hunter, who now is the, the athletic director up there. Exactly, exactly. We are set and ready for third quarter action. Chase Dodge will boot it away once again for the War Eagles and Greer back deep again. But uh, I don't think we've seen the ball get to a deep guy all night long no. in this kickoff. So they kicked him real short. They're going to look at Greer number 41. Make one of the guys who doesn't handle the ball handle it. Richard Davis returned the last one as the up back. This one, though, a little bit deeper, and this one will actually be taken by Greer at the five. And across the 15, he's got a little wedge there, 20, and up to the 24, hit and dropped hard. Not a bad return, but even better coverage by the War Eagles. It was Chris Escudi, as Cody, rather, excuse me, and uh, that was a good tackle. That was the best tackle for Maris tonight. Indeed it was. Madigan also in on that hit. Eric looks a little uh, better here. A little better. Had a yeah. half, I guess, to yeah. uh, kind of shake it off there a little bit. Maybe retape that thing. Yep. As we talked about, what an athlete, uh, as we mentioned earlier on in the broadcast, over 1,000 yards rushing and passing for that man right there. Split back beer is what Thomas County Central is famous for. And this time, Walden going to try out that ankle on the first play. He's going to have about five yards. Didn't look like there was anything wrong with that ankle there that time. No, uh, and Coach said, you know, he's going to suck it up. There's no more, there's no tomorrows. We've all dinged up. We've all got ankles, and everybody's got to go. And you'll see Walden here. Andrew Card brought him down. The safety came up to make the stop. Card with an interception against Cedar Schultz in the playoffs. And Walden's number seven rushes 78 yards now to touchdown. So he's well over 10 yards a carry. Second down at five. Twins left. And this time the give is over the right side. And that is Cochran, Moses Cochran, number 28, who also had a big first half. Walden went down again, and uh, I know he wants to try to probably save himself in the woman. If he hands the ball off, he wants to get out of there. Pick up of a couple by Cochran. So third down and about three upcoming for the Yellow Jacket offense. And 35, Derek Lovejoy out of the lineup. Jonas Jones checks in at wide out. Wide to the left, Flynn's to the left now. And you see the third down conversion picture, and Walden going to have a third down conversion right there. A gain of almost 10 yards, and they'll move the sticks. Ash Cody and Card combining for the hit there, but not before a gain of 10 yards and a first down. Well, he's really sucking it up. You know, when, when you've got an ankle like that, there's, there's nothing you can do about it. You just you have to grin and bear it. Put a lot of pressure, too, on that right angle, but he's, uh, it doesn't look like he's hobbling too much in there. So Thomas County Central again trailing by two as we open up third quarter action. Twins left once again, split backs, receiver wide to the right. And Walden on the keeper again, going to hurdle his offensive line there. Going to pick up about three yards, and that's what you really don't like to see is him going up in the air and having to land on that ankle. Detan Guchin Ritter with the hit there. They'd love to take this down, use the clock, keep their defense off the field. Take the lead here. Have a fresh defense to go against Maris. Well, if we hold serve, both teams will score on the opening drive like they did in that first quarter. Second down and seven. And Walden again on the keeper. Spins his way across the 45 up to about the 47. So it'll be third down and about three. As Walden continues to plug away here. Watch, watch the missed tackles again, you know, here. You know, that really you have to wrap up right there. And that's one thing that both coaches really want to focus on. We talked about, Coach Filter talked about the missing tackles, and mm -hmm. Coach Chadwick as well. And overall, not a bad played game, but they'd like to see it tighten up a little bit on defense. Third down and three for the Jackets. Here once again in motion. And the give is left side. That's Cochran, who's upended at the 44 of Maris, but a big run there. Card with the hit, but another first down and a big third down conversion. Gabe, that, that, that's their money play. That's their go-to play. Cochran off the left side. Uh, he's a great power runner, and that's what they scored on earlier. 7.5 a carry for Cochran. We, <laughs> we talked about that. The Jackets, when they put the ball in his hands, good things happen. First down and 10, ball to 46. 
Once again, split backs, and this time the give is to Dawson. The fullback, he's got room, 40, 35, 30. Watch out, Dawson turns the corner, kind of lost his place on the sideline, and they're going to mark him out as the 23, but if he would have stayed in bounds, he might have scored there. I don't know. This is a very explosive offense. <laughs> Every time they get wide, you think something good's going to happen for Thomas County. Now he had some room there, but you can see that he steps out right there at the 23. And that's the thing about this offense. You focus in on guys like Walden and Cochran, and that leaves your fullback. You forget about him, and then he's, he's good for 20 yards. So first down and 10, ball to 23. And they give it to Dawson once again inside the 10. It'll be first and goal. Chris Eschkody, the sophomore, brought him down. But I know the big first down, and they're really picking up yards in big chunks right now, Bo. It seems they've, they're, they're quick into the hole in the second half. It seems as though they've got their, uh, they, they, they really got together in, in, the, in the intermission and, and said, guys, let's bring it to them. Dawson, a hard runner. And a pretty big back there. David Dawson getting into the act tonight. Five rushes, 44 yards. He's just a junior. So first down and goal. This time, Cochran left side. He's got the five and a dive down to the three. And that's number 29, Chris Ashcote. He pushed him out. Also, uh, 29 there, Andrew Card finished him off. Saved the touchdown. Ball on the three. Now, let's see if they come to the boundary with Cochran with that power play that they scored on and picked up the first down earlier. Oh, here we go, second down. Yellow Jackets want the crowd to get into it. Maris defense trying to hold here. They've got a two-point lead, but Central knocking on the door. And it is. It's back to Cochran, but he is wrapped up by Deet. And a nice job there by the linebacker who came shooting through there for the tackle. That's the play that Maris has been waiting for all evening. A tackle for a loss. And, you know, that play was set up, and Deet actually messed up that play by getting penetration. And he didn't want to go that wide, I don't believe. There's another example of what we're talking about, too. A quick, quick defensive line, not very big, but athletic, and they're able to make plays in the backfield. Even without the size, they're still able to get a good push. So third down and goal now from the three. And they give it to Cochran right side, stretching, diving. Ball may have come loose. Maris says they have it, but I believe they're going to mark him down. Going to be right at the one. Will also be fourth down. So decision time once again. That was a great tackle by Maris. Again, now it's crunch time here. They were all of a sudden tackling well. We look at Cochran. Billy Guyton, number 12, checks in at wide out. Coach Pilcher. Fourth down and goal from the one. And Thomas County Central's going for it. Yes, left side into the end zone goes Cochran. And he stretches across that goal line and breaks the flame. What an athletic move. And Thomas County Central has their first lead of the night. They come back to their bread and butter. That's Cochran to the left side in that power play. Just uh, actually another good tackle by Maris. Just did break the plane with Pigskin. And we'll there take another here. look at it, yep. Almost a nice effort there by the War Eagles to keep him out, but Cochran would not be denied, and now it looks like the Jackets will line up and go for two once again here, leading 18-14. 6.08 left in the third. And now a flag comes flying in. That might be the first flag of the night right there, it, it, if I'm not mistaken. Except for the interference call earlier. That's right, that's right. We have as few as we've seen. You tend to forget about them. Can you imagine that? Here we are, else. almost halfway through the third quarter, and we've got really one flag at the line of scrimmage. That one's going to be on Marist. And it looks like a timeout being called by Central here. So the ball will be put down at the one and a half. And the Jacks decide not to call the time out there as they break the huddle. Trying to make it a six-point ball game here. And into the end zone. Moses Cochran, number 28, follows up the touchdown with a two-point play. 
And Thomas County Central leads it 20 to 14. They came out of the locker room with a vengeance for the second half, and they really put it together on that drive. And they're going to look at it. Basically walked in there in a great block, too, by number 51, Andy Norwood, the center, and Russell Orr, the right tackle, also chopped down as well. Went in standing up, and uh, Eric Walden, you got to credit him for that drive. Just did a, a tremendous job. These guys are quicker to the hole. The offensive line is, is off the ball better than they were in the first half. You know, a lot of times you talk about sometimes your your best defense is your offense, and that has certainly been the case for both these teams tonight. It's been a, keeping the ball out of the other team's offense, and they're going to look at the scoring drive right there for the Jackets. 12 plays, 76 yards, 552, and of course that one-yard touchdown run by Cochran. No better way to start the second half than that. <laughs> Abarca boots it away, and Davis set to return it inside the 10. We'll take it. Across the 20, a little room there, 25, and punches it out to about the 26. And Maris will have the ball for the first time here in the second half of 5.59 to go. It's been a ball control type of ball game. It has, and Coach Chadwick knows that this is an important important series for Maris, for the War Eagles. They've got to, they've got to answer that. They've got to get this lead back. Maris, much like Central, also averaging well over 30 points of ball game. They'll have it first down at 10 here. Sean McVay in, in your picture. Davis in motion. McVay on the keeper, but hit and wrapped up. Right at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by that central defense. Rice, number 22 in there again. Adam Manus, number 30. Several jackets in on that stop. And McVay's another guy who also had a very big first half. These quarterbacks really showing out tonight. That number 77, there's Ryan Rice, 280 pounds. <laughs> He's a big and He might be the biggest guy on the field, I'd have to think. So second down and nine, they'll give him a yard on that last play. And the wing team looked at Russell in motion this time. McVay going to pitch it out. Oh, the ball's on the carpet. And Russell will fall on it right at the 22. The pitch was a little bit behind. Central with a good push forced a bad pitch there. And that time they ran it to the boundaries at the short side of the field. See it here. And you'll see it was not a great pitch from McVay. Hit as he pitched it. And that was Denzel Marable making an excellent play from his defensive end position. Yeah, big number 91 there. Marable with 18 tackles on the season. And this is a Thomas County Central defense that recorded eight sacks against McNair in the quarterfinal. So they really get, they really push it up the field. Third down and 15 for Marist. Twins right, receiver left, Davis in motion. And McVay looking to throw, throws it deep in the flat. He's got a man complete. You number 30 on the reception. That's William Middleton, the 5'10", 158-pound junior wideout. And that is a big third down play there. That was absolutely huge. A slant and uh, watch your McVay put it right on the money here. Good low ball. Kept it out of the secondary's reach. The nose down on that ball, too. <laughs> and a nice catch there by Middleton, who picks up the first down. So Marist keeps their opening second half drive alive. And McVay on the keeper this time. Puts it up to the 45, and Brandon Walden pushed him out of bounds. And the clock will stop at 3.56 here in the third. Coach Chadwick running the, or working the boundary side of the field. Anderson Russell wanted the pitch that time. <laughs> Tell you what, Walden, number eight. We talk about Eric Walden. Number eight, Brandon Walden, has also been all over the place tonight, particularly on defense. Man, this guy's making all the stops back there, but that's not a good sign when your safeties are having to come up and make these tackles. Central would like to see more defensive tackles making some stops. Second down and three after a gain of seven. And give his right up the middle. But not much there at all. Nice job by Ash Cody. I don't think he gained anything, but this brings up a, a big third and three. Now another important third down to keep this drive alive. And converted on third 15, so this is very makeable right here. Oh, this is. Say the least. This is nothing. <laughs> Haven't seen a lot of plays for losses tonight. The defenses have really stepped up, but they've had to stay on the field a long time. These offenses have kept them out there, trying to wear down the other. Third down and three. And this 
time a reverse and a pass and a man wide open Davis at the 28 20 10 5 touchdown Chili Davis Chris Ashcody with the pass oh my goodness what a play <laughs> just a great call coach been that he had that one in his pocket he's been waiting for that just a great great call third and three to McVay here in the end around it looks like a reverse defensive backs come up that's Chris Ashcody too of course Chase Dodge will attempt the PAT here and I tell you what that had the jackets fooled there because Davis was wide open 30 yards down the field Dodge with the left foot and he puts it in there so 21 to 20 Maris back on top by a point here with 307 left of the third quarter and I tell you what Bo I'm getting exhausted watching these offenses go up and down the field. Fun. It's fun isn't <laughs> it watching these these formations and you know we didn't even mention that coach Chadwick came with a uh, you know four wideouts he almost had an empty back he did have one back he had no tight end he had four wideouts uh, you know on, on one of those uh, plays in that drive and um, you know it, another look at the uh, you know end around with the pass at the end and uh, Chris Davis is probably wondering, you know, the ball's in the air too long. It's taken too long to get here. You know, to his credit, he didn't get antsy, and he, <laughs> he looked it in. There's nice. nobody around me. Oh, yeah. Take your time. Make sure you catch it. Davis, yeah. I'll tell you what, he's got some jets. Looks like he could probably cover an outfield pretty well. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned earlier, an outfielder on that 2002 state baseball championship team at Marist. They're going to look at that scoring drive and a fairly quick one that time. Six plays, 74 yards, 245 off the clock, and a 54 yard touchdown reception officially for Marist. And the question in this ball game may be which defense can step up and actually stop the other offense. Might be a situation where the last team with the ball wins. And Dodge will kick it away. And rear back to the goal line, but that'll go into the end zone. And of course, you're can't take those out in high school football there. If they go into the end zone, it's dead and it'll come out to the 20. Well, after a score and to take the lead. Okay, guys, just keep it up. You guys are doing about the top of the world. Keep it up. Keep it up. Come on, team, guys. Go to fire it up. Oh, yeah. After a score and you take the lead, it's great if you can put it into the end zone. If, you, if you're trailing, you'd like it to come down on the end zone and hopefully knock it away, make a play on special teams. Right. So Eric Walden will take back over. And the Thomas County Central offense. And give this to the fullback straight ahead, but not much there. Again, that's Cochran. 28 on the carry. And a nice job in there. Looked like Greg Van Volkenberg, 63, was one of the first guys there. As you get a look at Cochran. We mentioned it before, but the uh, Maris defensive front seems to be playing better. You know, at the end of that last actually scoring series for Thomas County Central, but Maris is making tackles. They're, they're stuffing people for losses, and that has not happened in this game. Second down and on for the central offense. Coach Ed Bilcher looking on. And they're in motion to the left side. He'll put trips over on that side. And now Walden looking option. Going to keep it. Breaks off one tackler and a gutsy run up to the 30. Good second, third effort there. Tough run on a bad ankle when someone's got you and you have to <laughs> drive. You have to really talk it to get out of there. Oh, yeah. Dragging a guy with him there. And it's going to be uh, probably going to warrant a, uh, a spot right here. They're going to have to uh, bring the chains out. There's another one of those nose of the football jobbies. <laughs> You saw Deet, 45, nearly got that uh, nearly got that shoulder tackle there, but uh, just kind of slung off there at the end. Not a first down, no measurement needed, but third and inches. And Walter will sneak it ahead. He'll do more than that. He's got five yards on third down and short, and the uh, sneak there pays off. Dangerous, dangerous. If that tackle is not made, he's gone <laughs> on a quarterback sneak. <laughs> I don't think I've seen too many of those either. No. Right here, nobody over center. Andrew Carr there, Davis 20. On the stops, a first down at 10, ball across the 35. And Walden again on the keeper. Comes off another tackler or two, gets across the 40 up to the 42. So it'll be second in about five. Andrew Carr and Chris Ashkody with the combined hit. 
Picks up a couple of three, four yards on that one. They had him for no gain, but again, missed tackles. And I think that's what Coach Chadwick was talking about when he told me. You know, we, we've been hit or miss <laughs> on defense. And, and we've seen it just in the last two series. And this is a defense. Well, Marist, as we mentioned, they haven't really given up a lot of yards this year. 16 points of ball game. And the offense, you see Moses push straight ahead there on second down. And he'll have close to five, maybe six yards, close to another first down. I'd feed Moses. Boy, he's a tough, hard runner, tough to bring down, low to the ground. He plays with reckless abandon, just throws himself into it. <laughs> And again, not a very big guy, about 165 yeah. pounds. But he plays like he's about 180, 190. Yeah, he packs a wallop. <laughs> so a measurement here, close to another first down. And they're going to be a little short there by a couple of inches. Good camera work by our GPTV crew. Well, this is an opportunity for Coach Pilcher to uh, pull one of those trick plays out. Exactly. Second down and short. May throw it up down the field. We haven't seen that all night long from Central. They brought Billy Guyton, number 12, into the lineup. Also, Lovejoy, 35, splits wide left. Looks like man-to-man -man coverage out there, but Walden just going to sneak it forward, driven backwards, but we'll have to see where the spot's at. I believe he got it. Andrew Deet, the linebacker, came through there, but it is a first down. Of coming up, the 5A matchup with East Coweta, a team that was 5-5 five and five at the end of the regular season, but they have really turned it on here. Mm -hmm. Big upset win over Harrison, and they find themselves playing Parkview tonight. Again, Parkview looking for win number 44 in a row at 13-0, and, and now flags come flying in on that one. Danny Black, the right guard, looked like he left a little early there. Man. Mm -hmm. Thomas County Central looks a little slow in this drive, getting out of the huddle, and especially in the last uh, two plays in the series. Dead ball foul, false start on the offense. I haven't heard a lot from our referees tonight, and that's a good sign for both teams. Not a lot of yellow hankies out there tonight. That's good. Well coached. Clean ball game there, and this should be the final play of the quarter. And the clock will go ahead and wind on down, and that'll do it for quarter number three. So Maris with a 21 to 20 lead over Thomas County Central as we get set for the final 12 minutes of play here in the Quad A semifinal, the first one of the weekend. Again, we'll be right back right after this. Maris by one. have at the start of the fourth quarter getting ready to take place here the final 12 minutes of play in the first of two quad a semifinals and you can look at our man there in the red hat yeah. <laughs> Dave hold up four fingers <laughs> there you go this one this final quiz this is going to be a doozy <laughs> so here we go first down at 15 after that penalty Thomas County Central trailing by a point out of the football and a man wide open in the flat out of the backfield and a nice job there Billy Guyton number 12 with his first catch of the night and got back some of that uh, yardage, gets it up to midfield, will be second down at about seven, and he did take a shot there at the end of the play. Billy Middleton with a good open field tackle. And Guyton, the senior, with close to 400 yards that's receiving this year in a touchdown. That's just wind. Got the wind knocked out of him. You wiggle around like that when you get the wind knocked out of you because it's, it's, it's among the worst feelings in the world. And they'll go ahead and tend to him over there on the far sideline. We'll take another look at it. And you'll see the hit delivered by Middleton there, but yeah, I think I think you're right though, Bo. I think you just got the wind knock out of him yeah. there a little bit. So 11:45 left in the ball game. Again, Marist up by a point at 21-20. This ball game has gone back and forth all night long, literally. I tell you what, and there you get a look at the it. Uh, it just wind knock. The worst thing that these guys go through, <laughs> Dave, is like there's, there's two terrible sicknesses when you get the wind knocked out of you, and when your girlfriend breaks up with you, you get heart sick. Those two two of the worst feelings in the world. So second down and seven now. Thomas County Central set and ready to go. Middleton, number 30, who made that hit, had an interception against Griffin. As you mentioned early on there, and there you get a look at Guyton over on the sideline, grimacing just a little bit. 
And this time nothing doing. Maris getting it done in the middle. David Dawson, 36, and they're at linebacker. Helped to make that quick stop. That was either a lucky defensive call or Marist has got a clue as to what they're audibilizing at the line of scrimmage. Do you see them shift? They shifted to the left side. The defensive front did. So they've picked up something from Thomas County Central or it was just a, a lucky call. Big third down boy here. Third down about six and a half. Ball just into Marist territory. On the other side of that midfield stripe, and now Eric Walden will work out of the shotgun. And going to be a little quarterback draw, but the War Eagles going to eat him up. Two, three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Maris not fooled at all, and they really had a couple guys keying in on Walden. Shannon Quinn and Andrew uh, Montgomery looked like. Andrew Deet, rather, in on the tackle there. That was a huge stop for Maris to start this fourth quarter with a one-point lead. So now Brian Steed will go back into punt formation. They're going to look at it, and boy, Deet really came through yeah. there and laid yeah. a nice little lick at the end of that play. Hunter Harper will look to boot it away, and once again, that crazy punt formation by Thomas County Central. They spring him out all over the field. Three box blocking backs, about seven yards deep. Low snap. Hunter is able to get it away. Pretty good kick. Deep with the fair catch. He'll take it out to 20. And the purpose, of course, of that fun, I guess you spread the field and leave yourself ready to go. Well, just a reminder, mark your calendar for Friday night, folks, January 31st for the return of Georgia's longest-running high school sports and academics program. That's Prep Sports Plus with your host, Jim Janocchio. Again, you'll meet some of Georgia's most successful student-athletes, athletic programs, and much more. That's Prep Sports Plus returning on Friday, January 31st, exclusively on GPTV. Marist first down at 10, and McVeigh on the keeper, has some room, punches it up to the 30, and a game of about 10 and a half, going to be a first down it looks like. Adam Manus, number 30, with tackle downfield, but McVeigh doesn't look like there's anything wrong with his ankles. He continues to run. No, it, he, he took that shot in the arm. Remember, we thought it was a, sh a shot in the ribs. He took it in the arm, and uh, he's really got the wheels, and he's got a great sense and great vision, great anticipation. Coach keeps running that play, that option, to the boundary side. Of course, 9.42 left and counting. There you look at the total yards, and it's really evened up here. All of a sudden, Central has the lead. Maristow on this drive can add to that. And the option play. And hit in the backfield. Anderson Russell will go down. Ricky Davis, number 34, with a big hit. Again, you know, at the point of attack, no block there. The, he was, Brian Steed, uh, he's only 5'7", 175 pounds. He, he was leading that play and got himself shedded. Thomas County Central, they do not get themselves draped on blocks. Number 34 straight ahead to number 34 right there. And Russell, of course, had a touchdown early on in this ball game. And now flags are going to come flying in here. As play stops at 8.58 to go in the game. Looks like 12 men in the huddle. We're going to look at McVeigh. Of course, both these teams have gone back and forth all night and haven't seen the penalties fly that much. But now all of a sudden we've seen a couple here in the second half. Coach Chadwick very upset at that call because he understands how important this series is if he can run some clock. Substitution violation on the offense. There was 12 men in the huddle. And coach thought that he got him out of there in time to not get that call. There's Chadwick, as we mentioned, the winningest coach in Marist history. So second down and long here for Marist. Davis. And a pass play, looking to go up top. There's Davis down the sideline. He's got the 40, 45, 50, 45 still on his feet. And he's going to go, folks. Nope, they're going to call him out back at the 39. Oh, wow. Davis thought he had a touchdown there, but they say he stepped out back at the 39. But nonetheless, a well-designed, well-executed play by the War Eagles, and they're in business. And how about the long speed on Davis? <laughs> I tell you, I didn't think he was going to get there. It looked like the uh, central defenders had an angle on him. I thought he was going to go out back there, but he nearly turned that thing into a big game. I didn't see him go out of bounds. I, I, you know, I thought he was gone. 
And we're going to see, see if we can see it here. Excellent pass from McVay. Leads him perfectly. Beautifully yeah. executed right there, and uh, yeah, looked like he may have gotten that heel there, though. The officials have a better better vantage point than we do, but now the crowd's booing. They didn't like that call either. McVeigh on the keeper, picks up a couple down to the 37. I didn't see it. <laughs> well, obviously, the, uh, I think the Marist. But I don't care. Marist, yeah. <laughs> I, think the, I think the Marist fans saw something, though, because they are they're certainly uh, well, they voicing it, their displeasure. They put it on the jumbo trunk. <laughs> Coach Pilcher will take it, though. That's right. <laughs> well, the thing you have to remember here, though, is that Marist has the lead by a point, so they're not only wanting to score again, they're wanting to eat up some of that clock, too. Eight minutes to go, and Coach Pilcher needs a stop. Russell in motion. Misdirection play. Davis spins off a one tap, but he has stood up hard. At the 32. Big time hit there by Denzel Marable. That's the way you draw it up. That's the way you, you tackle practice right there. Ricky Davis, 34, also getting in on there. This is a beautifully designed play. They pull their guard. Almost like a, you know, a trap look out of the wishbone. Now an official's tied out here, working on some equipment there. Chris Shilly Davis, three rushes, 87 yards. And a touchdown. How about that ratio right there? I tell you what. And Chris is warming up. <laughs> and just a junior, too. And it's scary to think when you look at both these teams, they may right, be right back here again next year playing each other for the semifinals. So third down and eight after that big hit by Davis. Swing T. And Chris Davis in motion. But they're going to keep it, going to break a tackle, and going to punch it down to 30. Going to be a yard short, it looks like, as Brandon Walden brought him down. That time they run to the field side and they you know, get a big gain out of it. And I think that pitch is going to be there for Davis next time they do that. When you have quarterbacks that can run like these two teams do, it's almost like having another running back. Oh, absolutely. You have to account for everybody. You're usually in football, when you, you don't account for the quarterback. You know, obviously the Falcons have showed that you better account for Michael Vick. And with these two <laughs> offenses that we're seeing here from Thomas County Central and Maris, you've got to account for all 11 men. Exactly. Fourth down and a yard, and the coaches for Maris are screaming for a timeout. And they get it with 6.35 to go in the ball game. And again, the Warrior goes up 21 to 20. Exciting game. Of course, tomorrow we'll see Thompson and Shaw in the other half of this Quad A matchup in all four of these teams. We talk about Cinderella teams, but uh, Marist, of course, has been been here before. They were here in '99. They lost to Mount Zion Jonesboro 10-7, but they've won a state championship. We all know Thomas County Central's won several state championships. Really, the team of the '90s in AAA, and of course, Shaw and Thompson, who we'll see tomorrow, also have a, a state championship or two to their name. I just think of the, about the big-time players that have come out of Thomas County Central. Oh. And the Charlie Wards and the oh, yeah. Joe Burns is exactly so many more offensive defensive linemen, linebackers. Right. Right. To say Never nothing of Maris. Mar you know, Maris produces a lot. Well, earlier today, they're going to look at some of the results. Clinch County all over Hawkinsville. Clinch, of course, is here last year, 36 to nothing to score in that ball game. And then in Double A, Buford hammering Americus. A lot of folks a little surprised that that was as lopsided as it was, 38 to 12. And then, of course. The Triple-A ball game, what a ball game in overtime. Dublin, 20 to 13, will head on to the state championship. Fourth and one. And McVeigh going to swing it out there. Davis trying to hit the corner. He's got the first down on fourth down. And we've seen a couple of fourth down conversions tonight for Maris. It's chilly time. <laughs> They've been warming up that chili, and he's ready to turn it on now in the fourth quarter. That might be that might be why they call him chilly because he puts out the fire. And that uh, I guess that might be what they want him to do here. Still plenty of time left, even if Maris does score in the mm -hmm. next couple minutes for Thomas County Central to get down there, score, hit for two. But the way this Maris defense has been stepping up here in the second half, Central really needs a big stop here. And that's Ash Cody, the fullback, who dives down to the 20, going to pick up about three yards. And that's the kind of team these, these two teams are. Even when it doesn't look like there's anything there, they make something happen, pick up two or three yards, they go north to south. And this is typical of the matchups that we've talked about. You know, one-point difference in this game, that's 
very often the way they end between these two, but Marist hasn't been able to break through. They can smell it, though. They feel it this time. <laughs> They're telling each other. And we probably won't see an overtime with a one-point lead no. like that. There's not going to be too many combinations, I don't guess. 5.55 to go. Once again, McVay, Davis trying to turn the corner. It'll take it out at the 15. Walden with the tackle out of bounds there on the far side. That time they got a block at the point of attack. It's been very rare for Maris. Ready to look at it. Central has done a nice job, though, with that defensive end crashing down, making McVay get rid of the football a little bit quicker, though, in the second half. Well, they want to take the ball out of his hands. He was so effective in the first half. Good point, Dave. But now that's why Chile's seeing more ball. 30 minutes after this ball game, we'll see Parkview and East Coweta. A big matchup there. Charles Ward and Gerald Riggs will have the call for you, and they're going to look at a loss there. McVay actually went down. I believe they're going to say his knee was down before the pitch. Mm -hmm. And that time, that's exactly what we talked about. Thomas County Central doing a nice job stringing that one out. Another fourth down decision to be made. We've seen fourth and one. We've seen fourth and two. This is going to be about fourth and about four and a half here. But Maris is going to try a kick a field goal here, it looks like. Chase Dodge, who has had an excellent year, will line up and kick the 34-yard attempt right here. a four-point ball game, and the kick is there. It's got the leg, and it is through there. So Chase Dodge from 34 yards out makes it 24 to 20. Now Thomas County Central has five minutes exactly on the clock to try to drive down and take the lead. He's a senior kicker. I have not heard that. Well, watch how smooth he is. He doesn't uh, overstride. He doesn't try to get too much into it. He just pops it. And uh, I'm sure he's got a, a future in, in college. There must sure. be a lot of schools looking at him. 34 yards, and that ball hit at the very top of the yeah. uprights as it went through. And not a lot of effort going into that kick. Very smooth. Right. And a lefty, too. You don't see a lot of left footers. <laughs> and now Dodge will put the tee down on the ground, get ready to kick it off here. And Thomas County Central would like to have a big return. Special teams play has particularly been excellent tonight, really, for both teams. Haven't seen a lot of breakdowns. Harris, of course, trying to break that. that I know coaches don't like to use the word jinx, but obviously Central has had their number in four meetings in 96-97, but the thing is a lot of these Maris players weren't even around when all that was going down. Some young guys. They'll take it out to 10. That's Cochran on the return. The running back uh -oh, loses the handle. Uh, I believe they're going to say he was down though at the 30. Thomas County Central. Yellow Jackets now have got four minutes and 52 seconds to score and put up a two-point conversion. And there's the drive right there, that scoring drive. Ten plays, 53 yards, 501. That, that might have taken the longest time tonight right there at that 34-yard field goal from Dodge. Scoring drives have been short tonight. Well, they wouldn't go for two. They just, uh, just a field goal would, would beat them. So first down and ten. Eric Walden under center. Going to keep it, and he is hit by Deek. And a host of others, also number 36 and on that tackle, J.D. Black. Another sophomore. Really took a shot on that ankle that time. They're hobbling around again. Yeah, the problem is he just can't juke. You know, he just... And he, he had to stop and take that shot. And you see the way he planted, he picked that foot off the ground. He hurt that before it contact. And he is hurting out there right now. And we have to have an official's time out here. Walton's going to lip off the field, and he's going to come out of the ball game. That's too bad. What a great game. And it looks like Brandon Walden will be the guy to come in and take his place. Also, number 12, Guyton, the senior, will check into the lineup. Guyton with one catch tonight, averaging 15.5 a catch, had a seven-yard reception earlier in the half. And Billy Guyton will actually be the new quarterback there. And he was wrapped up and going nowhere. So Guyton showing his versatility. 
into the ball game there, but only picks up a yard, so third down and nine. Maris defense playing better now than they have all game. Here comes Eric back. He's still hobbling, but I'll tell you what, he's going to come back in this ball game. Knowing what's on the line here tonight, and man, this is a gutsy performance right here. Well, you can run your offense, obviously, without him. He knows the offense better than anybody else. They trust him with the ball. Russell Orr, the right tackle, trying to get the crowd fired up. Wall down to the shotgun. A little middle screen set up. He's got number eight. That's Brandon Walden with room. 50, 40, 30. Watch out. Brandon Walden down the near sideline. Makes the move. He'll get in the end zone. Brandon Walden, 68 yards. Great call. Great call. That screen. And credit Walden. Look at Walden. Walden, you can't see him now. He's just hobbling off the field. What a gutty, gutty performance by him. And, and it was just a perfect ball he threw. Eric Walden to Brandon Walden for 68 yards on the middle screen. Short pass, but made a big run after the catch. And Jonathan Abarco will line up for the extra point here. And both the tables have turned. Yes, they have. 26-24. <laughs> now it's Central who will try to go up by three here with 3.23 left. False start. False start here, so. I don't know. Chance for two, perhaps? You, no. think he, you think he kicked the extra point, but they were trying to make him jump there, so. No, you kick the extra point because if you don't make the two point conversion, a field goal beats you. Dead ball foul. False start. And the offense. Marist, uh, I thought uh, Thomas County Central was celebrating, thought that Marist had come across there, but it actually went against the offense, so they'll back it up, and indeed they will kick this extra point. And I think Coach Pilcher has probably noted the Marist field goal kick. <laughs> <laughs> so Barker now with a 25-yard extra point. And the kick is right through there. So 27-24 with 3.23 to play in the ball game. And we have seen some great action so far at the Georgia Dome. Some good ball games early on. Some, the AAA game was great. Now this ball game right here is unbelievable. Here's the screen. Perfectly thrown. A guy with a bad ankle, you know, just doesn't worry about anything. Just throws a nice easy ball out there to catch. And then the speed is just absolutely remarkable. Here at the end, this has been Maris's problem all night. It's Chili Davis not able to make the tackle there. And Maris, as coach thought might happen, did not tackle well tonight. Brandon Walden in just five games this year with 12 receptions for 175 yards, had a 50-yard punt return against Woodward Academy in round number one. And he shows his athletic ability on offense here. He's been the big guy on defense, ironically, but he has the biggest play of the ball game on offense thus far, too. But if you want to know the truth, it's probably better for Maris. Coach is probably thinking now it's better that they've scored quickly rather than have the ball exactly. on the 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 yard line and, and use clock to go in. Very quick there. Three plays, 70 yards, a minute 37, and of course that wall, 68 yard touchdown catch. And a kick by Abarca. And Davis will take it. Across the 20. He's got room. Watch out. 30. And a good open field tackle there by Rice, number 22, Eric Rice on special teams, and it looked like there was going to be a lot more there than there was, but boy, Rice really closed it up in a hurry. Rice made a great open field tackle because you can tell, obviously on that play that was called back before, that he ran out of bounds. Chili Davis has got long speed. Yes, he does. And now it's the central defense trying to get this crowd into it. As you can look at Coach Chadwick of Marist, still plenty of time on the clock here. And Dave Garner along with Bobach live at the Georgia Dome. Quad A semifinal. Maris from Thomas County Central. And the Warrior goes with the pitch. And a big tackle there by number 60. That's Ben Williams. Ben Williams came from the far side and ran him down. Came from the other side of the line of scrimmage. Short gain, maybe, maybe two yards. Here he comes from the defensive end position. And guess who else is in on the tackle, too? 22, Mr. Rice. 
very Pat Kearney-ish <laughs> play to <laughs> running someone down like that. Oh, yeah. So second and eight, crowd fired up. We see look, Davis now in motion. And McVay on the keeper. He's got room. And across the 40, going to be close to another first down. Brandon Walden with a hit on defense. I think he's got it, Dave. And, you know, he really wants to make that pitch to Chile because Chile's got that speed that you know, can take him to distance. And they also had a block out there. They had a body on a body. And uh, that might have gone if he did give him the pitch. We talk about the unity of this team. As we said, not a lot of, not a lot of uh, Division I prospects. Yeah. And that's one thing that Coach Pilcher wants his team to do is... Hold hands there, get together on the sideline, play as a unit. That's exactly what they do. Both of these squads, you can't get this far without uh, major college talent, which neither of these teams do at this at, you know, at this point this year, without having camaraderie, solidarity, you know, a feeling of family and togetherness. Both of these squads have that. Maris, they first down by the nose of the football. We've seen a lot of close, close measurements tonight here, and the War Eagles do move the sticks with 2.20 and counting. Time winding down here at the Georgia Dome. And time possibly running out for Maris. The War Eagles. And Thomas County Central in a classic quad A showdown. And once again, McVeigh on the keeper, but a short gain, maybe two around that right side. What a hustle and get in the huddle. 159, 158. And you'll see Adam Manus with a big stop here. Manus number 30 is another guy. Fought through a block that time, too, and made the tackle. Spending too much time in the huddle. Hodge Wooten and Davis will go wide left. Second down and eight. And Anderson Russell to the near side. And McVay looking to throw, now being pressured. Will get it out of there, and it's knocked away. And a good defensive play over there on the far sideline. That was number 18 for Boris Daniels. Maris coach is jumping up and down over there looking for interference coming over the back. But I, I believe the ball was uncatchable. Good job to escape the rush. No, he knocked it away. He might have been on the back. Pass intended for William Middleton. So third down and long now. Minute 26 to go. This has been some kind of matchup right here. Thomas County Central trying to extend their winning ways over Marist. They lead it by three. McVay looking deep in the flat. He's got a man there. And that is Hodge Wooten, the outstanding wideout. He's been kind of quiet tonight, but a big catch there for first down on third and long. Lock stops now at 117. If you look at Wooten, 15.8 yards a catch this year and a touchdown. Davis is the guy that's got to win this game. If McVay can't, can't turn the corner, he's got to make the pitch. McVay out of the shotgun this time. Twins left and right. And he's going to keep it. And they'll take it inside the 40. And Eric Rice, another tackle. Another big game. They're on first down, but the clock will run under a minute. Rep takes a shot. Boy, they've done a great <laughs> job all day today. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you, they've hung in there. And now a timeout going to be called by Marist. 54 to go. That's the first timeout, so they still have two more. Thomas County Central has all three. And so the official take a good shot here on that last mm -hmm. play. <laughs> Goodness. But, but you know what? He did the right thing there. He popped right up yeah. off the turf. He didn't lay there in that curve, man, I'll tell you. Who's wondering what you said about this turf being soft? <laughs> wondering what you were talking about. <laughs> well, he doesn't have the pads on either, though, so you got to give him credit for that. He doesn't have all the, the shoulder pads and the helmets on there. And you get a look at the timeout picture. Marist actually with just one timeout left. So they've got to use it to very careful here, and it's going to be second down and three when we return to action. Again, Charles Ward and Gerald Riggs going to have the call with the 5A matchup coming up. In Parkview, 13 and 0, number one in the state, as they've been pretty much all year long. East Coweta, though, don't count those guys out at 8 and 5. Coach Chronic has done an excellent job. Pulled off a big upset last week against Harrison. Here we go, four wides, Dave. Up again, Twins left. Now Russell near side again, second and three. And Bay looking to throw, going to be sacked and taken down. Denzel Marable in there. The flag comes flying in late. 
Also, Antonio Spears, number 68, and Adam Manus, number 30. A blitzing through there, but let's check that flag. Watch McVeigh as his back turns to the backside. Doesn't see them coming until it's too late. Manus and Spears Personal with the foul. initial. Wow, wow. Oh, wow. Did not see that. I wonder if it had something to do with that sack or not. It looked pretty pretty clean, I guess. It had to be someplace else, yeah. It's Coach Pilcher trying to find out why. What happened? How could you call that? Dead ball foul. Personal foul on the defense. It was called on Marable. Denzel Mirable may have come in there a little late, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the uh, call was. Well, one more play now. They're in field goal range. That's going to put the ball all the way down at the 29. And McVay on the keeper. Oh, great tackle. Down to the 25. Still going to pick up four yards, though. But indeed, a good open field tackle by no other than Ricky Davis. Yeah. Great tackle. And the clock will continue to roll here. Maris still with one timeout. Second down at six. They look at a throw being pressed, and he'll go down. Antonio Spears with another sack. And that'll force Maris to burn their final timeout with 17 seconds left. Well, that was a big play. That was the biggest play of the game, you, you could say, for Thomas County Central. This light, young offensive line of Maris, is just, they're just not set up, Dave, to pass block. They haven't done much of it. it it's a tough situation to ask them to... You know, to win a game by throwing it, they're not used to it. Antonio Spears, the big boy up front, right around 260. And right up the middle. Right now you're looking at about a 48 or 49-yard field goal attempt. Yeah. It is third down, but you don't have any timeouts left. So Marist will, if they do run something, they'll have to run it to the sideline or they'll have to have that uh, field goal team ready to come in quick. And I doubt they'd have enough time, to be honest with you. Well, you think the, the only option now is it's third down. You've got two opportunities to throw it. You throw it to the sideline. Try Unless you gamble against uh, you know, against two safeties, uh, against the two deep, you can uh, you can hit something over the middle. And they've already shown Central the, uh, the reverse, the trick, halfback, the reverse pass there. So you got to think that uh, the Jackets will be looking for it here. Third down at 13. And McVeigh will work out of the shotgun. And now Anderson Russell will come to the near side once again. Man in the slot. And McVeigh looking downfield. Hodge Wooten one-on-one. -on -one, and the ball's going to be thrown short at the goal line. Wooten wanting the flag. Yep. And that was just one-on-one -on -one right there. So fourth down and 13, but they threw to the end zone, and it stops the clock with the incompletion. Wooten had a step, and if McVeigh could have gotten the ball out there just a little bit further, they might have had a play on the ball. And also, you know, at, at the you know, at the point, the cornerback made a great play. So here we go, folks. This is it. <laughs> Chase Dodge attempting. Well, it'll be about a 49-yard field goal. We're going to ice him. Thomas County Central had three timeouts remaining. Now two. They may take them all. <laughs> Ten seconds left of the game. And, of course, the big question coming in, Bo, was whether or not Thomas County Central could continue their dominance over Marist in the uh, in the dome here. And, of course, like they did in 96 and 97. But Marist, I'll tell you what, take your hats off of these guys. It's going to come down to this field goal right here to see whether or not we have our second overtime game of the night. But it's been a well-played ball game by both teams. Is this typical? <laughs> Is this typical or what? You can tell Chase Hodge really likes kicking on the rug. You know, if you're a good field goal kicker, you get a surface like this, uh, you can really uh, you can really sweep the ball. And now we're going to see him. Uh, it won't be effortless. We're going to see him have to drive the ball. They'll take another one. <laughs> Coach Filter doesn't know I'm hungry. He doesn't care. <laughs> Field goals have certainly been a big part of today's action. Of course, Dublin 
falling behind after having a big lead in that fourth quarter in the AAA game. Came back, tied it up, and then won in overtime. And this ball going to be put down at the 39. So a 49-yard field goal attempt to tie this ball game up with 10 seconds left. Chase Dodge, the kicker, with the leg. He's got the distance, and the kick is going to be there. <laughs> a 49-yard field goal. Four seconds left on the clock, and we might be heading for overtime, folks. A memory for the rest of his life. And, you know, they, these kids, will they, they can almost relive every one of these plays 30 years from now. <laughs> Playing in this game and doing something like that, it just becomes indelible. Let's take another look at that one. Oh, my goodness. He's saying right now, you know, don't hook, don't hook, don't hook. Perfect. True. <laughs> It's a great snap. Great wow. snap, obviously a great hold. Yeah, Hodge Booten held it. And and even when he drove it, you could see, you know, he, he doesn't he doesn't <laughs> overcrank it. He's got a smooth leg. Well, four seconds left, so we'll get a kickoff here. But if Thomas County Central is unable to return this thing, we'll have overtime in Atlanta once again here live at the Georgia Dome. Triple A ball game between Dublin and Laney win it overtime, and now we're staring overtime in the face here in this quad A matchup, and of course the 5 A matchup about 10 minutes late already. <laughs> yeah. Parkview and East Coweta coming up, but maybe a little bit more football to play here. And if this thing does go to OT, we'll kind of break down the, the overtime sequence for you in case you missed it in that Triple A matchup. So Dodge will boot it away in a high, deep kick. They'll go ahead and send it back, and Greer will return it from the goal line. Oh, and he's got the 20. Got a good block there, still on his feet, but he will go down at the 28. And regulation has expired here at the Georgia Dome. So how do you like that? Well, here we go. <laughs> you know, the first two games today were not close games. Right. But the last two, we have made AAA up for and Quad A has certainly been exciting. We have made up for it. We'll go ahead and step aside. We'll come back and break down the overtime for you. 27-27, Marist at Thomas County Central. We'll be right back. Well, here we get ready for the first overtime period. Of course, two five-minute periods will play out. And if there's no score, if it's tied after that, then we'll go to the longest non-scoring drive. Of course, penetration and a all of high school football throughout the last few years. You've probably seen a game or two or heard of a game or two like that. Again, Marist and Thomas County Central, 27 all. Dave Garner along with Bobak live at the Georgia Dome. And this is our second overtime game of the night. I don't know for sure. I don't have it in front of me. I'd like to know how many overtime games I've actually had here in the semifinals. This might be the first two, though. Maybe, yeah. I'll tell you, um, you know, Coach has really got a weapon there with that field goal kick with Chase Dodge. And, uh, you know, he knows that. Coach Pilcher, you know, would just go crazy after this game over that personal foul that really gave them the opportunity to get in field goal range without earning it. Exactly, exactly. We saw a 40-yard field goal from Dublin to tie that ball game right back up the end. That was a 49-yarder, so the kickers of all people are showing out here tonight. And captains, of course, will come to midfield here and talk about who will have the ball first in this first overtime. Again, we will play two five-minute periods regardless of where the team scores. It's not sudden, sudden death. GHSA talking about maybe replacing the team. We'll get it first. The number six is Jordy Williford, wide receiver, senior wide receiver, Thomas County Central. Yeah, Central actually deferred that toss there. And let's go ahead and quickly throw it on down to John Nelson. John, what's going on? Just was in the Thomas County Central huddle, and they said that they had been through this situation earlier in the year against Thomasville. They were down for most of the ball game, came back, sent it to overtime, got the victory. And what happened in that game, the coaching staff told the players, we shook it off. We stepped it up, and they emphasized the exact same thing for this overtime period here against Maris to shake it off and step it up for the next 10 minutes of play. Guys? It's an old coaching ploy, Dave. You know, when, you, you know, when you're tired, when you're down, it's, that's when you say pick up the pace. Here we go. We're, we're going to go into another gear now. 
And incidentally, that game against Thomasville was also September the 13th, Friday the 13th. <laughs> and they've come back, and they're looking to do the same thing here. And as we mentioned early on in the broadcast, Marist only lost this year. Came on Friday the 13th, that same week, against Tucker, who, of course, was eliminated earlier in the playoffs. So both teams trying to uh, trying to keep those fortunes going there a little bit, I guess, trying to turn it around if you're Marist. That comeback was from 28 to 7. Wow. They came all the way back to win that game. So Jonathan Abarca set to boot it away as you get a look at the front line there of the Marist Four Eagle return unit. Abarca sets. Sean McVay, number 18, the quarterback. There's the guy back deep. Also Davis back there with him. We get in this overtime now. Marist is healthier than Thomas County Central. Eric Walden, of course, quarterback hobbled by that right ankle. Heavily taped, but he has fought all day. Gutsy performance. And the kick by Abark is a deep one. will be taken at the one by McVay. Punches it out, 20, and out to the 23. And you know more than anything, Walden was a guy who hated to see this thing go to overtime. He really hated when that ball sailed through the uprights. He wanted yes. to get out of here with, that, uh, with the win, especially mm -hmm. with the way his ankle is. Well, he's played a gutsy game no matter what happens. So first down and 10 for the War Eagle offense. As we open up overtime period number one, the first five minutes. Ooh, a little pop there. Still stayed on his feet, but a nice shot nonetheless by Mark Pickett, number 13, the initial guy there. First and 10, Davis. McVeigh, keeper. Punches it. Across the 25, good for three. McVeigh knows he's got that he's got that pitch to Julie Davis. You can't help but feel like they're biding their time. He could have he could have pitched it uh, a, a time earlier, and I think they would have made big yards. And I know coach and the coaches up in the in the coaching booth have probably told coach on the sideline that that will go. Second down, long McVeigh this time on the option. Going to get it out there to Davis. Turns the corner. And we'll pick up about two or three, but Central, nice job there. Eric Rice strung that play out, so not a real big game. Of course, the winner of this matchup will play the winner of tomorrow's quad-A matchup between Thompson and Shaw next Friday night. 7.30 right here on GPTV. McVay on that last play did not have a chance to, to penetrate and get the persuasion to come toward him. Third four wishbone now. Receiver wide near side. Central with eight in the box. McVeigh looking to throw. Has a man wide open in the flat. At the Scotty, the fullback, who steps out at the 43. But a big gain there. Gain of about 12 yards. And a first down. Kavoris Daniels pushed him out. Pretty good looking play. As Cody, if he had gotten a block out there, it was just one defender out there. With three Maris players, nobody was able to get a body on um, Kabora's head. So Maris moves the chains here. 407. The time in this first overtime. Glad you could join us live at the Georgia Dome. Semifinal football action on GPTV. Here's McVeigh on the keeper, gets turned around and takes a good shot at the 45, picks up two. But that's all, though, and Central's defense teeing off. Ben Williams, number 60, one of the guys who made that play. That time they came to the field side, and to the open part of the field, and I think they, they I keep saying, I, I keep thinking they've got that pitch to uh, Chili Davis when they come to the wide side of the field. Brian Steed into the lineup, Anderson Russell will go out. And again, coming up, 30 minutes following the completion of this ball game, it's Parkview and East Cowie to the big 5A semifinal matchup right here at the Georgia Dome. Second down and eight, reverse. Hodge Newton with room. Well, in front of 45 the midfield. Front of the 45, still on his feet, 40, and pushed out at the 39. And a good run there. Had a lot of real estate over there, but Central showed how quick they are. Big play for Maris, but Central's defense with a lot of speed <laughs> on that play to really hit those pursuit angles and get over there because it looked like Wooten was gone. Matt Rumsey over there. Far side of the field, pushing him out. 
Boris Daniels over there. So first down and 10 after the big play by Marist, and the War Eagles are driving. The wing T look once again. Speed in motion. McVay on the keeper. Oh, man, he had a seam there moment. Yeah, he there. did. Good tackle, though, by Mark Pickett. Pickett may have saved a big play there. He got him around the ankles. Big John Crawford, number 62, uh, really had an opportunity on the play before this to get out. Get, he he kind of kind of slowed up, uh, you know, the play by not getting downfield. Go ahead and take a look at those overtime rules again. Two five-minute halves, no sudden death at all, and it's not like college where you line it up on the 25 and punch it in. There's standard game rules and scoring applies, and if the score is tied after playing those two halves. And the team which has advanced the ball furthest on a non-scoring drive gets awarded a point and the win. And there's a play. Uh-oh, Davis with some real estate inside the 30 down to the 25 and a gain of 11 on the play and a first down. Ricky Davis with a stop. And first time we saw Davis take it up the middle on that counter play, kind of the old uh, out of the T formation would be a cross buck. And by the way, there was a team here today that ran the T formation. That's what we were talking about. We've got the beer here tonight. We've got the whisper. We've got the T. We've got the wing T. <laughs> Shift of eye formation this time. McVay on the pitch. He's got speed, and he is run down, and a flag will come flying in. A face mask going to be called. That'll be a 15-yarder, Dave. Yeah, Ricky Davis slung him down there. And that will probably be the 15-yard version. That'll really put this ball down there for Marist. Every time Maris gets to this point in the field, something horrible happens to Thomas County Central. No doubt about that one. Yo, know, Dave, nothing hurts worse than getting your helmet ripped around. I once was looking out of my ear hole because of a personal <laughs> foul, face mask on the defense, first foul. It kills your nose. <laughs> what a wonderful nose you have, too. I mean, oh, thank you. You know. <laughs> well, 2 3 left in this first overtime. And score tied at 27. Barris, after the personal foul, will have its first and ten at the 14. Wing team. And give it straight forward. Ash Cody driving is stood up at the 7 or 8, but a nice run right up the middle on the quick hitter. I think that play calling in this drive in overtime has been superb. I mean, he's showing them everything, and uh, it's, it's just been uh, tremendous. Thomas County Central, is, there's, there's no place they can lay in wait. There's no place they can load up. They've attacked both sides of the defense up the middle. They've thrown it. You see Coach Pilcher on the sideline there. Second down and three. McVay on the keeper, breaks the tackle to five, still on his feet and down to the one. Tough kid. Antonio Spears with a touchdown saving tackle, but it will be first and goal for Marist. It's too bad Eric Walden is hurt because this would have been a classic high school shootout between two great option quarterbacks. Talked about the coaching. Of course, Chadwick, as we mentioned, the all-time winningest coach in Marist history, over 200 victories to his name, 27 years altogether at Marist 18 as head coach. And, of course, Coach Pilcher, 12 years at Thomas County Central and several state championships on his resume. Well, that time, Ash Cody stuffed right at the line of scrimmage and a nice job there. Marable, 91, was one of the first guys there. So it was Adam Maines. And Eric Rice, too. Adam Maines, outside linebacker, only 170 pounds, and he came with all of it. <laughs> Take a look at that bone-crushing hit right there. Man, oh, man, really stood up. Nash Cody's a pretty big boy, too. Harris Four Eagles, they've scored on every possession since halftime, and they're looking to keep that trend going here. And McVay dives to the goal line, but uh, no signal yet. I think they're going to say his knee hit before he broke the plane. Timeout. Maris calls the timeout. And that ball is going to get about as close as you can get to the end zone without putting six up on the board. Look at that. That was a great call by the referee. 
you've really got to be on top of your game to make that call, and that was a good call indeed, but that ball's about an inch or two away, and that's it. As you get a look at Coach Chadwick on the sideline, of course, or it is with the time out there. Well, if you're enjoying GHSA football live from the Georgia Dome, show your appreciation by becoming a member of GPTV. Log on to our website at www.gpb.org. It's easy, totally secure, and only takes two minutes. That's www.gpb.org. And thanks for supporting high school sports on Georgia Public Television. Thank you so much for high school sports. Of course, I'm excited about prep sports. Plus, coming back on the air, always do a wonderful job with that show. Jim Ginocchio, the old veteran. <laughs> Jim Ginocchio has been Mr. Prep Sports Plus. That's right. That's right. They do a wonderful job in really spreading out that coverage. So here we go. Third down and goal for Marist. On about the three-inch line. Wishbone. Option. Anderson Russell. Touchdown. Russell with his second touchdown of the night. And this one puts Marist up 33 to 27. Great call. You have to protect the interior line. You have to take that away. You have to take away the quarterback sneak. You have to take away the dive play. And then to pitch it outside is an excellent call. So now Dodge will attempt the extra point here. And Marist strikes first blood in this first overtime. Just nine seconds left. But remember, another five minutes will follow. So the ball game not over with. Wooten will hold. And Dodge who hit that 49-yard game-tying field goal. Boots the extra point right down the middle with authority. Pretty good overtime drive. How about four minutes and 51 seconds? I think they held it the... <laughs> You're right. They held that thing the whole time. That's something else. And I'll tell you what. Both teams have done it all night long, though. You can't take away anything from the defenses. They've played hard, but these are two explosive offenses. As we said, coming in, both of them averaging well over 30 points a ball game, and it's tough to have to go up against something like that. Just so well coached, both offenses. I mean, you know, these guys run it to perfection. They run it, the, for instance, uh, Thomas County Central runs the veer the way Phil Yeoman designed the veer. <laughs> he would be proud of this team. 11 plays, 64 yards, 451. And, of course, Russell, that one-yard touchdown run there on the option from McVay. So now it's Thomas County Central's turn. They've only got nine seconds. The five-minute half, of course, upcoming. And it's basically played like two halves, so they'll reset after this nine seconds on the clock here. And Dodge will boot it away, and he'll go ahead and kick it deep. Really gets his foot into that one. And the ball going to be ruled in the end zone there. Greer took it a foot inside that goal line. Mm -hmm. So it'll come out to the 20. And that's a great kickoff with the lead. You don't want them to bring it up. We're going to look at Greer, the tight end. We had a big uh, reverse play early on in the ball game in that first half. Big senior. And Eric Walden will hobble in there. I'll tell you what, a gutsy, gutsy yeah. performance from that just, young man, though. Just tremendous. 6'1", 170, 224 yards rushing in a ball game earlier this year. And the ball's loose on the turf, but a flag comes flying in. That was number 25, Peter Guchenritter. The linebacker came shooting through there for the recovery, but flags are down. Sure, it was a false start, and that's what made it a dead ball. Yep. And Central got lucky there that that penalty was indeed called because if not, <laughs> Maris might be mm -hmm. lining up here ball. for a field goal. False start on the offense. Yeah. Senate forgot the snap count. <laughs> Everybody else went. talk much about the play of the offensive lines tonight, but those running backs couldn't do it alone. These guys really opened up some big holes tonight. Got Watkins. Thomas County Central, Black and Crosby, Palmer and Orr. Those guys really showing up tonight for Maris, Norwood, and 
Hollinger and Adams, Rumsey, Redder. And give straight up the middle there. Notice is Cochran trying to break it outside. But the clock will wind down, and that'll do it for the first five-minute overtime period. But another five coming up. But it's Marist with a 34-27 lead as they score the only points of that first overtime. We'll step aside and be right back with the next five right after this. You're watching the State Semifinals on GPTV. You're watching GHSA Football on GPTV. Dyer, Bo Bach with you here at the Georgia Dome. Maris leads at 34-27 as we get set for the second five-minute overtime period here. It's been a great matchup. It's seen big running games from both offenses, and now it's Thomas County Central's turn to answer. And the thing is, they've got a score here to try to tie this ball game back up. Mm -hmm. And they'd, they'd love to have a drive, a four-minute, 51-second drive, just as Maris did. Of course, Thomas County Central with state championships in AAA and 92, 93, and 94, and of course in 96 and 97, and of course in that uh, 96 year, uh, Joe Burns uh, named as AAA Player of the Year. Coach Pilcher named as AAA Coach of the Year. They averaged 37 points a ball game. That might have been one of their more memorable state championship years. They just really had it going on as they have throughout really the 90s and trying to continue that trend now into Quad A here in 2002. Both coaches uh, acclaimed the uh, Coach Chadwick in 91 was the Wayman Creel uh, Coaching Award winner. In 97, it was the NFL High School Coach of the Year. So Chase Dodge will boot it away. And rear back deep again. This one's returnable at the one. He gets it out to the 20. Still on his feet. He's got room. 30 and tripped up. And will go down at the wow. 33. Boy, one. Uh, I didn't see who the Marist. Uh, cover man was who got his arm out there it was Andrew Moore I believe number 85 wow. and uh, <laughs> that's the tackle of the year for him 33 yards on the kickoff return and you, you know he's just been back there wanting one all night long Dodge has been kicking yeah. in the end zone and Greer finally got a shot there to return one Walden's out there Eric Walden number two again Thomas County Central with the football trailing by seven and they've got 452 to get it done and now Flags. Pick it up. No. Nope. Waving her off. Now Eric Walden has probably only got one more time, Dave, to, to talk this thing. You know, he's got these in the last three series we've seen him he's had one plate in him. Before it went. And pitch. Cochran outside trying to turn the corner. 36 stays on his feet. What an effort. Let's see, run. Wow, by Cochran gets up close to first down yardage. Andrew Deep pushed him out. There you see it here. You get the hands on him, and, you know, that, that hurts. And then another missed tackle for Maris. Two, three missed tackles. You know, you got to think if Thomas County Central goes down and scores and eats up about four minutes here. <laughs> not really going to be any non-scoring drives to uh, work penetration from. But, of course, Thomas County Central, that last kickoff, they had it, I guess, at the uh, 20 and got a few yards mm -hmm. there. But uh, that was their non-scoring drive, if you will, of the uh, first overtime. Mm -hmm. And that last play good enough for the first down there. Russell Lohr, the right tackle, has been one of the more animated offensive linemen tonight. He's waving his arms, really trying to get that crowd fired up. Normally you see those skill position players doing that, not those offensive linemen. Yeah, but normally it's the defensive side. You really don't want <laughs> noise when you when exactly. you got a snap count. Walton looking to throw, has time, has a man. Cochran at the 40 complete and down to the 36. What a throw. Oh, man, Andrew Carr, the safety, brought him down. What a throw and what a catch by Cochran. Hey, everybody, did you see the fact that because of his ankle, he couldn't step into the throw. He threw it purely with his arm, very much like Michael Vick. Watch this. He cannot step in. That's just with the arm. Great grab away from the body. Had to pull it in there. 
And any time you're over the middle like that, you kind of kind of blink if you're a receiver anticipating the big hit there. But he did the right thing. He caught the football first. So first and ten ball just outside the 35. And this time Walden on the keeper breaks a tackle. 30, 25, 20-yard line for Eric Walden on the keeper. Fighting through some pain. Didn't look like he had a bad ankle there. But, man, oh, man, what a big run. Kids, just a sack of hustle and guts. <laughs> William Middleton with the stop there for Maris, but a big gain in a first down. And watch the first here. He knows he's in space. He knows he's, he's he, he tried to uh, spread those uh, two defenders there. And we're going to get another burst here. Just when you think he's done, he comes with another gear. So Central on the move, Eric Walton, 17 rushes, 128 yards, and a touchdown, another big night for the quarterback. Cochran, 15, and we go down at the 13 or 14. Andrew Carr brought him down, and the clock continues to roll at two and a half, and, Bo, you got to thank Thomas County Central. You don't want to mess around and not get the touchdown, but you want to keep that clock rolling because mm -hmm. all of a sudden, if you tie it up, give them the ball back with some time, all they got to do basically is punch it out to... 20 or 30, I guess. That's Moses Cochran who's down. He's in pain. And that's not a good sign for Thomas County Central. That might be. Might have just had the wind knocked out of him also. Oh, no. No. Right on the knee. Hyper extended the knee. And threw the ball down, too. Yeah. Well, that could have been ruled a fumble there. I don't really know. Could, could have been he was lying on top of somebody. Yeah. yeah. Borderline, borderline play there. And obviously in some kind of pain. And that's a big blow for that Yellow Jacket offense. As we mentioned, Thomas County Central out of the Thomasville area there, over 230 plus miles making the trip here to the Georgia Dome. Marist a little, little closer than that in North DeKalb County. But a lot of history between these two schools yeah. and having so many miles between them. In the 90s, sure. Two great programs. Two storied Georgia high school programs. As you said, Maris was playing football for over 90 years. And something that, that really, really makes you think about it is something that you talked about in that pregame, about 20 consecutive playoff seasons, 21 consecutive winning seasons. Right. There's not, not a lot of teams anywhere that can say no. that. Even some of the best are going to have uh, a down year or two once in a while, but uh, not the Warriors. And I don't want to make people in South Georgia crazy, but it appears that the the power has shifted to uh, Gwinnett County, shifted north. And, and you, you know, you talk about the the park views in the Brookwoods, but you also have teams like Buford and GAC, some of those other Gwinnett teams. South as Gwinnett, well. sure. 2.38 here in the second OT. And it looks like, looks like Cochran is up, and he's being helped off there. But that's a good sign. He's putting a little bit of pressure on that right, uh, that right leg there, so maybe it's, not, uh, maybe it's not too bad. And there you can look at Cochran's numbers tonight. 20 rushes, 77 yards, and two touchdowns for the junior running back. Well, when you hyperextend the knee, it hurts like crazy. But, you know, the knee comes back just you rest you put it in a splint and at least it's it's, uh, it's together There's nothing damaged really in there Cochran over 1100 yards this year so here we go second down and three and they gave a straight forward driving punching David Dawson moving the ball across the 11 or 12 puts it down to right at the 10 and that's going to be close to first down yardage. The Maris crowd is exhorting their defense to make a play. Just somebody make a play. Clock stops at 2.07, and it looks like they will bring out the chains here and have another measurement. A lot of close measurements tonight. We've had the, uh, we've had the chains yeah. about, out about four or five times in this one. And, of course, our second overtime game of the night. And just going to be inches short. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got to get the ball right inside the 10 there. If they hit the 9.5, they'll have it. Third and inches. 
So Thomas County Central breaks the huddle. Jackets need a yard here on third and short. Flip backs. That's Garland, number 25, who takes over for Cochran. Uh oh, ball loose. And Walden will fall on it, but a big loss there. Now all of a sudden, third and inches becomes fourth down and about three here. Well, wow. talk about a big play. Well, you got to score the touchdown here. So you know they're going for it. And I didn't see what happened. Walden might have pulled out a little bit early. They're calling timeout here to talk it over. But he might have pulled out a little bit early. Just a little antsy to pick up that first down. Yellow Jackets crowd has been a little bit more boisterous this second half, but now all of a sudden the Marist crowd is really getting behind their defense here because now they can smell it on fourth down and better part of two and a half, mm -hmm. three yards. One play. They, they need to make one play. Central still has three timeouts, so even if they don't get it, they can stop Marist there, but you know they'd rather go ahead and convert here, Coach Chadwick. Well, Cochran has been their short yardage guy. He's out of the game. I think you probably still put it in the hands of Walden. And again coming up, Parkview and East Coweta. Charles Ward and Gerald Riggs with the call of that ball game coming up after this one. A little bit later on our schedule with these two overtime games. But hey, when you're watching good football like that, who cares anyway, I guess. <laughs> Fired up. Here we go. Fourth down. They got to get it just inside the 10. Split back. And to give it to Dawson. He has hit, drives, and still on his feet. And he's going to have the first down. What an excellent second and third effort for David Dawson. It's just a, a <laughs> tremendous effort. David Pinelli uh, had him in the, in the backfield, could not wrap him up, could not get him down. It was a determination. Look at the leg drive. Keeps him moving. Vaults over the pile. Card finally brought him down, but it's first down and goal. 130 left. And the give is right back to Dawson, but he has stood up that time. And forward progress still probably going to lose a yard or so. That was Peter Gutierrez with that first stick. And the clock will continue to roll down here. And now Jonas Jones, number one, will check in to the lineup. Second and goal from the nine. Under a minute now, Coach Ed Pilcher looking on. His team trying to tie it up. Good pass. And this time, throw it. Walden looking to throw in the end zone. No one open. He's going to run it, tucks it, and drives it inside the five down to the four. And the clock continues to roll at 37 seconds and counting here. That's a that's a pretty good call. You got the option to run it. If, if the pass is not there, then you just take it. So a timeout call with 33 seconds left in the second overtime. Again, Maris with a seven-point lead. Third down, facing a third down. Well, thinking ahead, if they do punch this thing in here and you get the non-scoring drive, I guess the furthest non-scoring drive, you got to think they probably, they got to boot the ball deep on the kickoff and hold these guys. I guess the marker's at the, uh, I guess around the 25, I guess. I thought it was, yes. So you want to leave, if you're Thomas County Central, you want to leave as little time as possible, obviously, for Maris to, to be able to do anything on the return. But this game still could come down to penetration. That's the that's the crazy thing. Well, don't forget, in, in both of these overtimes, Maris has only had one possession. Right. And a scoring drive. Ball control. It has been a story of offenses here this evening. Of course, the winner of this ball game will take on the winner of tomorrow's Shaw Thompson contest. And the state championship will play out next Friday, the quad A, Friday 7.30. And give it straight up the middle, diving towards the end zone. No signal yet. 
And that looked like Moses Cocker, number 28, who snuck back into that ball game there. He got back in a hurry, didn't he? Wow, so that knee must not be too bad. Yeah. I thought we I thought we'd seen the last of him. He came back in there and nearly snuck that ball in there. You can see how close it was. Kind of like the about the same place that McVeigh put it at the other end. Yep. <laughs> Tell you what, these guys are back and forth, and their rankings are certainly being justified tonight. Uh, Maris came in at number four, Thomas County Central at number three, and I'd have to say that they're pretty evenly matched going off of what we've seen here tonight. Dave, this game comes down to fourth and one inside the one with 23 seconds remaining. They're going to look at the Parkview Panthers who are waiting to get out there on that field. I tell you what, they're anxious. They've been waiting a while. Scheduled to kick off right around 9 o'clock, and... We're already past the uh, 9, 9.45 mark, I guess. Talk about great programs. They're going to look coming up again. Parkview at 13-0, taking on 8-5 East Coweta, a team that was once 5-5 five five at the end of the regular season, but they have really fired it up. And again, that ball game coming up next, right here on GPTV. So fourth down and goal. Inside the one. Wow. 23 seconds left in the second overtime. And Thomas County Central, the Yellow Jackets, trying to punch it in. And the Marist War Eagles trying to keep him out. Eric Walden under center. And they give it to Cochran. Right side punches it in for the touchdown. Cochran comes back from the injury and scores what might be the biggest play of the ball game, depending on what happens here. He's their go-to guy. Short yardage. He's a tough runner. Tough, low to the ground, great body lean. That's in the trenches right there. Yeah, you saw that uh, Thomas County Central get off the ball before Maris did. And another timeout called here. And now you got to talk about this extra point and kickoff. There's the scoring drive. Thomas County Central Yellow Jackets 12 plays, 67 yards, 440. And, of course, that one-yard touchdown run by Moses Cochran. And we'll go ahead and take another look at that touchdown. Right there. TCC got underneath the Maris pads. That's three touchdowns tonight. And that's right. There is the matter <laughs> of an extra point. That's right. And I'm sure that uh, I'm sure Coach Pilcher is reminding his guys of that. And it looks like, well, they might be going for two here. They're going for the win. They may not leave it up to penetration. They're going for the whole McGillis. So here we go, folks. They think they've lost on penetration. They have to. Eric Walden, the quarterback, going for two. Cochran again. Right side, he's in. Moses Cochran with three touchdowns tonight and a two-point conversion. And it's 35-34, Thomas County Central with 20 seconds left. So penetration has been taken out of the book. And now Maris going to have to return this thing here. Maris can't take any more one-point losses to Thomas County Central. And of course, as John Nelson was telling us earlier on, back in 96, 97, Joe Burns, when he was around, this heartbreaking loss. Mm -hmm. Same kind of ball game. Right. And Central trying to continue their dominance over Marist. Wordle still with 20 seconds left, though. They didn't fool anybody. They, they said he's our go-to guy. This is he. This, you know, this is our runner. This is our money runner. You know, it's not like they ran a toss sweep outside either. They basically exactly. ran him off tackle. Boom. This is it, guys. This is everything. <laughs> Tell your offensive line. This is the whole hey, that's deal. A great job. the huddle. Congratulations going on to the sideline, but you know, we see this a lot, and not many teams have a return that you have to score on. They may have time for a play or two, depending on where this ball comes down at, but that's about it. Jonathan Abaco will boot it away. And once again, McVay back deep, a low liner. Davis will take it at the five. Good Chili Davis at the 20. 
And taken down for 25. Good special teams tackle. Rice, number 22, one of the first guys there. And we talk about him as a starting linebacker, but he's had a couple of big kickoff tackles tonight. And we get a look at the junior, Chili Davis. He's also had a big ball game, but they need a big play here. And there you get a look at the, at the hero so far in this ball game, Moses Cochran over there on the sideline. Hook for the completion and the lateral on a hook and ladder to Chili Davis. Got something right now. They don't have defenders out there. Trips to the right. McVeigh looking. And now he's going to run it. And McVeigh will head right for that sideline and pick up a couple. And you're right, Bo. It looked like they had the numbers out there momentarily. That's right, they did. So five seconds left, and the season hangs in balance right now for the War Eagles of Marist. We can't throw a Hail Mary, so it's got to be a hook and ladder. Thomas County Central has a safety 40 yards deep. 30 yards, now he comes up. Timeout going to be called by Sean McVeigh yeah. and Maris. He wants want to spell it out to him. He wants to tell him the only thing that they can do is hook and ladder. It's the only thing you have to be aware of. Uh, don't let a defender, don't get a, a, let a wide receiver get behind you. Just play a three deep. What they should play, they have the single deep. They should play three deep so they keep everything under. Nobody gets in back of them. But that also sets up the hook and ladder because what happens in football, the, the, the ball is a magnet. All the defenders come to the ball. That leaves the outside pitch available. Speaking of, I believe it was Thompson, the team we're going to see tomorrow night, that did that very same thing against Rome in the playoffs in overtime. 0-0 in that ball game. Thompson runs that hook and ladder, scores off of it, and would eventually win. And they're going to look at the unity on the sidelines of Thomas County Central. They can feel it right now. And the winner moves on to the state championship next Friday night at 7.30 right here on GPTV to take on the winner of that Thompson-Shaw matchup. And, of course, coming up here in a little while, it's Parkview and East Coweta. Both teams waiting right around the tunnels, getting ready to come on out here. But five seconds left, and the season for Marist. Trips left. Receiver wide right. McVay looking for it across the middle. Has there it is. High to the and the ball is loose, and it's on the ground. They were looking for it, but it wasn't there. And Thomas County Central, in dramatic fashion, gets out of here with a 35-34 overtime victory in another Quad A Classic matchup between these two schools. Absolutely amazing. Marist is heartbroken. How can this happen again, they're wondering. Take your hats off to the War Eagle program. They've had an excellent season, but Thomas County Central will go to 14-0, and they will play for a state championship. Yep. What a great game. And the game coming up, Parkview, one of the nation's finest squads. Both teams getting ready to come onto the field there, but there you get a look at Thomas County Central. We'll go ahead and take a timeout and come back to wrap things up in the quad matchup here at the Georgia Dome. We'll be right back. You're Thomas County Central with a 35-34 dramatic victory over Marist in overtime. Let's go ahead and throw it on down to the field with John Nelson, who's standing by with Coach Pilcher. Have you caught your breath yet? <laughs> it's going to be hard to get, get it back, that's for sure. Uh, what a game. I guarantee it. Heck, the fans got their money's worth right there. First of all, let me tell you something. Marist played one heck of a ball club, a ball game. And it was just, it was just like a, a heavyweight fight, just matching punch for punch for punch, and you know, we got one more punch in is all I can say. You know, when uh, uh, our kids just refused to dig them give in when it looked really bleak. But uh, just so proud of our kids. Our coaching staff did a great job. Just a great victory for us. All right, let's talk about that 15th round in this title fight. You score, you're down one. Did you know that you probably were going to get it on penetration regardless, or knowing you, you're just going to go for two anyway? Well, no, we got to kick off to them with 20 seconds to go. Our only penetration we got is to the 20-yard line. Uh, that's a no-brainer. Uh, they get a kick return. They win by penetration on a kick return just to the 30-yard line. We had to. There was no. There was no choice of that. We call that. We call that back in the before they scored their touchdown. We said we're going for two because we know we don't have penetration. Six years ago, he wins it on finesse. Today you win it on power. Ed Belcher, congratulations. We'll see you next week. Back upstairs. All right, and congratulations yeah. to the Thomas County Central Yellow Jackets. That's it for us. We'll see you tomorrow night. But coming up here.
in a few minutes. It's the big 5A matchup between Parkview and East Coweta. Dave Garner along with Bo Bach will send it to Jim, and he'll have the kickoff. Charles Ward and Gerald Riggs for you in about 26 minutes. This broadcast of the 2002 GHSA football semifinals has been provided in part by IBEW Local 613. Georgia Electric Membership Corporations. South Trust Bank. Dodge. The Governor's Office of Highway Safety. And by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution.